Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. If your tooling isn't quite ready, and you need parts, and you need more parts than just a few, or if your run is just not that big, look to the experts in low-volume production, three-dimensional services. Whether it's 10, 100, or 1,000 parts, we can meet your needs. And if it's 10,000, we can do that too. Three-dimensional services delivers high-quality parts for short runs, 70% faster than industry standards. Three-dimensional services. Prototype. Production. Proven. You've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything. Hawk Performance Packs 100 Years. Speed Tour and Trans Am, the first of the year at the home of where Trans Am began in 1966, Sebring International Raceway in Florida. I'm Jonathan Green. Alongside me today, Joe Stevens, looking forward to this. Joe, of course, running one of the teams in Trans Am, but loves his TA action. And I guess, Joe, the first question is, last year we saw an absolute exhibition by one man. Chris yes. Dyson, and I've got a feeling he's planning to do it again. But we've probably got one of the deepest fields we've had in a long time in TA, so can anyone stop him? Well, it's going to be really tough for Dyson, but it always is. Winning these championships never comes easy. He's going to start third today, so uh, he's got some competition in front of him, that's for sure. It's going to be interesting this year because Chris Dyson once again goes in his favor, and he's even brought in the likes of Andretti. Uh, Adam Andretti, of course, who's familiar in Trans Am, has already been racing in TA2, and Matthew Brabham, who is the ultimate ringer. Whenever he's got it, a Dyson car, he seems to win in it. But the one question mark hangs over whether people like Justin Marks, who took the pole here this weekend, That's right. can actually change things up. Paul Menard is back. Boris Sett is here. These are all guys who love winning. Incredible drivers and incredible engineering from the guys behind the scenes. In TA, there's a lot that you can do, a very flexible rule book. So it's going to come down to a lot of different factors today. But ultimately, Racing is what it is, and that is a really tough competitive sport. And honestly, I think Justin Marks is going to be tough to beat. Well, you might recognize the name Justin Marks because, of course, he is the team owner of the famous NASCAR, although very new team, Track House Racing. So talk about having a target on your back. Yes, he runs a couple of great drivers in NASCAR who I'm sure will be watching, but now he's got to walk the walk and talk the talk. Has he done it? Heck yeah, he's done it. He's taken pole position for the first race of the year here at Sebring. And we spoke to him with our own Ben Sissel. First of all, though, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back with all the action and that word from our pole man. Hawk Performance packs 100 years of friction dynamics into every product. Backed by Carlisle Brake and Friction, the world's premier innovator of industrial brake and friction components, Hawk leverages R&D tools and motorsports experience to deliver uncompromising performance on the street. There's no reason to settle for less. Choose pads that are race proven and street legal. Find the Hawk Performance brake dealer near you at hawkperformance.com.
And they started actually at Trans Am with standing starts right here on this front straight. Standing starts today would be crazy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. If I could get Justin Marks to come up to his car, because I want to point out something really cool. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Marks and the Sebring Speed Tour, our Motul Pole Award winner. You can see that right here. A brand new car, Justin. I know you haven't gotten to here. Stand by your car, if you will. I know you haven't gotten too much time to test, but tell us about this TA car and what you're doing today. Well, um, racing one of the coolest cars, I think, in the history of racing, honestly. The, the, uh, the power-to-weight ratio, you heard Boris talk about it, power-to-weight ratio in these things, there's just not a race car on earth like it. I mean, we're, we got almost 900 horsepower. These things weigh something like six or 800 pounds less than a, than a NASCAR Cup car. So lots of grip, lots of aero, um, and uh, it's a lot of hard work driving these things, especially you get late in these races when it's, it's so hot and humid, all the tires, you know, all the, the grips burned off the tires, so it's, it requires a lot of restraint and a lot of race craft to get it to the end. So I'm I'm excited. I love Sebring. I've run the 12 hours here six, six or seven times and, and uh, uh, hopefully can get my first win today at this awesome racetrack. So your real job is track house racing. And I, I love Daniel Suarez, but I got to say probably the coolest thing I've seen in motorsports and my whole life was Ross Chastain there. So this is kind of like your fun vacation, but also you're a race car driver and you want to test yourself. Yeah, I tell people I've never actually truly met a retired race car driver. I mean, even though I, I quit running full time about four or five years ago, I still have to still have to, still have to get out here because the reason I'm doing all this and, and uh, got into forming track house just because I love race cars. And I love driving race cars. So uh, if I get a chance to do it, those guys are those guys are battling snow and stuff out in California. So if I can come to South Florida and race this cool car, I'll uh, I'll do it. But yeah, I just I like to drive, um, and you know it gives me. Uh, you know, I can communicate with my two drivers, Daniel and Ross, better if I'm in the seat. You know, I feel what they're feeling. I understand what they're going through. It just makes me a more effective team owner. So excited to be here with Showtime Motorsports and uh, this Riley chassis. Hopefully uh, keep it in the front all day. Nice. And do your drivers text you with some tips every once in a while? Um, no, they say good. They say good luck. They're all they're all doing their competition meeting out in Fontana right now. So I think the YouTube feed will be up inside the hauler there and they'll be watching it. So I got to. I got to do good for them. They'll be watching. So it's nice and warm here, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice, nice and warm here. And, uh, and uh, hopefully we can win this thing and I can send him a text message and say it's your turn now. Nice. Yep. I love it. Justin Marks right here in the front. And talking about retired race car drivers that just can't seem to retire, Paul Menard up here in this beautiful Weaver Concepts. And you can see here this is a fast car, two poles last year and paul we talked about we talked about last year you came and ran here at sebring last year and actually had a little bit of a mechanical that you had to come back from on the pace lap do you feel like this is a little bit of a redemption from that yeah a little bit i mean i, I last year was the first time i've ever been to sebring obviously as a kid growing up in in the racing world it's always been on the bucket list and i uh, got to uh, actually experience the track last year it's it's as advertised it's badass it's bumpy uh, it's a cool racetrack and uh yeah, I drove uh, Ken's car last year, and we were really fast, just had a, a gremlin at the start of the race, and finished the race, you know, for the most part, uh, with really good pace, and uh, uh, Poncho uh, gave me a call about a month or two ago. And Oh, ladies and gentlemen, his old teammate, Boris Ed's coming up, smacking him in the face. Like 21 years ago when he was a little kid, you know, he came before he was a NASCAR star, and before he won the Brickyard, and before he won Road American NASCAR, kicked all those boys' butts. <laughs> He came to our team when I won the Trans Am Championship, and he was just a little kid trying to learn to race Trans Am. So 21 years later, now we're in the same cars. It's, it's kind of funny. Now, you're getting smacked around by Boris said on the fan walk. You're going to smack him around during the race? If I see him. Let him try. <laughs> <laughs> if I catch him, it's coming. <laughs> if I catch him, it's coming. I love it. Paul Menard, Boris said, thank you guys so much. And that is the show. Another non-retired, retired race car. I love it. Chris Dyson right here. I don't know if Chris Dyson is around our two-time champion. Here he comes. He's zipping up, ladies and gentlemen. We got to talk to the champ. Beautiful new Jim Weed, the purple Altwell. You can see this right here. No jitters, no crash. Jim Weed, he's coming up, zipping up. Chris Dyson has a ton of victories here at Sebring in the 12-hour. He's grabbing some Jim Weed. Matt Brabham, feel free to come over here too, buddy. All right, Chris Dyson, right in front of your car. Do you want to be right in front of that? However you want to do it. Hey, You're back. Now, Chris, I was talking to Joe Stevens about this. This is the most excited I've been for a TA race since I've been with Trans Am. The field is absolutely stacked. We've got some new chassis. Are you a little nervous? 
No, Ben, I'm excited like you are. I mean, look at this grid. Look at, look at this. I mean, we've got, we've got probably at least 10 race winners here, five champions. Uh, this, is what we go, this is what we go to the racing for, is to go up against the best. And, and you look down this field, there's some great, great teams and, and cars. Obviously, we're thrilled to have three cars on the grid this weekend. We've got two Jim Weed cars and one Allgram car. Uh, I think we're going to be uh, very competitive today. I think it's going to be a great show. We've got, we got our work cut out for us, but uh, that's why we go racing. Now, we're talking about the history of Trans Am here, but bring Matty Brabham in, because we're in the shadow of some Brabham history. And introduce everybody to Matt Brabham, and then explain, and I'll have Matt explain that. Well, Matty, I don't think needs much introduction. I think he's got the highest winning percentage in Trans Am history, at least so far. Yeah. And uh, he's done a great job. We're just thrilled to have him in the stable this year, and uh, I think we're, we're going to go out and try to work together and get a great result for the team. Nice. Matt, explain that. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously a lot of history here at Sebring, but not also with Chris as well. I mean, he's had a lot of success here, and uh, to be a part of the team at a place like this, in cars like this, in the Jim Weed cars, is just so much fun. I mean, this is one of my most favorite racetracks. It has so much character, and uh, when you have this much horsepower and this much grip, uh, it just doesn't get any better. It's, it's a great day. It's perfect. Can't wait. All right, now where can we get some Jim Weed? Uh, retail, retails, retails nationally. Uh, it, you can find out more about it on jimweed.com, and you can follow us on the social, uh, on, on Twitter and on Instagram at Drink Jimweed. Nice. I love it. Chris Dyson, Matt Brabham, unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have to close the grid here in about 30 seconds. So if you can make your way over to that one, two, little one, two, bridge one, two, walking thing. We're going to try to talk, actually, to Tommy Dreesey, if that's okay, because I don't know if this mic will reach down to Tommy Dreesey. Tommy, you're in a brand new car. I mean, brand spanking new. It's the GT001, right? Yep. Three GT001? Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's like accumulation of, what, 38 years, 40 years of uh, a team that's been uh, building Trans Am cars. So... It's uh, number 38, but they're calling it 001. So I guess I'm the first James Bond. So <laughs> no. But uh, anyway, hey, all the fans out there, uh, Lucas, the Lucas family, thank you for your support. Uh, the 3GT family, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we got our work cut out for us. We're uh, back in 20th for a, a penalty. Uh, so, you know, one car at a time and uh, see if I can come up and have some fun with these bad boys up here. Nice. I love it. Tommy Dreesey. And, and one bad girl over there, right there. Nice. I love it. Tommy Dreesey, starting from the back. Adam Andretti, when I spoke to you just a couple days ago, you were racing in TA2, and then somehow somebody's like, hey, you want to drive one of these cool cars too? Yeah, I, I didn't even let Chris finish the sentence when he was offering it. It was uh, an immediate yes. I mean, I was... Uh, I was very blessed that uh, John Cloud, my owner in TA2 and Ultimate Headers Racing, was, was open to this to drive this all Grand Ford Mustang for CD Racing because I am so proud to be part of this and, and uh, to be teammates with two-time champ Chris Dyson, this absolute amazing talent of Matthew Brabham, and, and you know you get to see all that and be surrounded by that. It, it only ups your game. So excited to get this 100 miles going, and I think it's going to be – this is the deepest we've had a TA field in a long, long time, so this is going to be some exciting racing. I love it. I love it. Adam Andretti. And let me point something else out if you're paying attention. We've got the big three back here at Sebring in the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. I'm in front of Keith Grant's beautiful Chevy Camaro. Then we've got a Ford Mustang. And then we've got a Mustang and a Challenger and a Camaro. How cool is that? Some big American muscle here. We're about to start some great music. I wish I could go further back in the field, but that's as far as this microphone will go. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need everybody over the fence. Keith Grant, you ready for this race? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it today. Now, people that are rooting for Keith Grant, tell us what car you're in. I'm in car 40 in fifth place right now. Nice. And fifth place in this stacked field, that's got to feel pretty good. Uh, yeah, it does. For my second start, I feel really good about that, so I'm enjoying it. Nice. And I love that volunteer's hat, buddy. <laughs> Keith Grant right there, starting fifth, new to the TA Series. His father's been racing in the TA Series for quite a while. But um, unbelievable. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. Even in testing and everything, you can see here we've had, uh, you know, some, maybe some little kisses out there from Justin Marks. He says he doesn't know where that come, he came from. So uh, we'll see what, what he was doing. So we don't know if that's car or wall, but talking to Jeremy right now, this is where it starts to get kind of heat on high. 
These cars are hot, and we're about to get going here at the Sebring Speed Tour. Much better weather than it is and uh, where Justin Mark's friends are right now. So welcome. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start our invocation with my friend Marvin Gray, who goes up and down the paddock praying for our drivers and our crew, keeping me grounded. So we really appreciate that. So if you could bow your heads, take off your hats. Marvin Gray, deliver the invocation, please. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today in the beauty of your sunshine. We thank you that we're back racing again, folks. Lord, we pray your blessing on the drivers, the crew, all of the officials and the workers, everyone who's a part of putting this on. And we thank you for all our fans that came out today. Bless you. And Lord, we do ask right now that you would bring healing to those who were injured yesterday. And Lord, I pray that you would be in our world and, and in the wars, in the disasters, bring healing to those who were hurt. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Marvin Gray, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, I've, I've heard all about her. Erin Senna, known as Raggedy Ann, to deliver the national anthem. Where, where do you... Right here with the flag in the background. Do you want to hold the mics or do you want me to? I'd like to hold my own mic, baby. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we had? At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through a perilous fight O'er the heavens we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air Hey, through the night That flag was still laid Oh, say does that star sprinkle Fill our way Oh, Aaron Senna, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron, absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm going to need to take a breath, Jonathan and Joe. You guys take it over and announce this unbelievable grid in the TA XGT SGT GT class. Yeah, I think it's these. So a beautiful setup here from Ben Sissel and the team as a wonderful rendition of the national anthem gets us underway. Let's take a look at a grid for the first race of the year, and it is Trackhouse's Justin Marks on pole position and alongside him another TA hero, Paul Menard, alongside. Chris Dyson, the champion, Matt Brabham, his teammate on road two. Keith Grant, newcomer but fast. Adam Andretti, not a newcomer but just as fast. Boris said, a champion years ago and still as fast as ever. David Vintarek in the 57, looking to go well. Again, Amy Ruman, two-time champion. Matthew Butson alongside her on row five. Probably the deepest field we've had. Ken Thwaites, a huge team in Showtime this year, says it's his last year. And another great, Wally Dollenbach, coming back for more. He is on row six. Then Danny Larry, Lee Saunders, the Florida favorite. Tyler Hoffman, Aaron Pierce, Chris Coffey coming in. And former GT champion, Billy Griffin, will go through the actual TA GT and XGT, SGT crowd in a minute. Richard Grant, Tommy Dreesey didn't, uh, got a penalty for missing the driver's briefing and has been put back there. We should watch him come through. Kaylee Bryson, a newcomer to the series. She's a dirt 
track girl at heart from Oklahoma trying Trans Am for the first time. Randy Hale is a returner in XGT. He knows what it's all about. And Nathan Bird having a busy weekend both in SVRA and here in Trans Am. He too getting a penalty for uh, an infraction of the rules. Just saw a quick glimpse there of the hotel at turn seven. I'm delighted once again to have Joe Stevens alongside me. And we're looking forward to this. The first year, the first race of any year, racing year, is always exciting because everybody's kind of checking everybody out, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. And you get to see, you know, what everybody brought to the party. Who's got the speed? Who doesn't? And I'm really impressed to see between the top three drivers, less than a second split in qualifying. And uh, it's going to be an exciting race. I'm super excited and grateful to be here. You know, I'm also, we've been talking a lot in TA2 about the youngsters coming through. These guys, the, these kids of 15, 16, uh, and many others, all trying to sort of get their way and learn their way on the road courses, potentially being associated yeah, with you. NASCAR teams in the future. And yet we've got a tra we've got track house here who's a NASCAR owner. And we've also got the likes of Boris Said and Paul Menard, who are teammates way back in 2002 when Boris was winning in TA and winning the championship. Kind of sets it up nicely, but it just shows you how deep the love for this particular form of racing is. Absolutely. The field is so deep. The experience that these drivers bring and the heritage that they've accomplished, it's just incredible. And now we get to see it play out in front of our eyes for the beginning of the 2023 season. How is racing at Sebring? You manage a couple of very good charges in TA2 and obviously Stevens Miller Racing, second to none when it comes to racing in Trans Am. What are the conditions like and how do you set up? You had a test at Sebring. Um, how do you approach racing at Sebring? Well, you know, obviously your main focus is achieving the most mechanical grip as possible. Getting as much out of the tire is key. However, with the bumps that you experience in turn 17 across the main straight and into turn one, make it very difficult. Let's head once again down to Ben Sissel because the start command is about to get underway. We'll talk more in a moment, Steve. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we're talking all about the history here. And this man, Parnelli Jones' grandson, Jagger Jones, Parnelli Jones, obviously a Trans Am legend, and now Jagger Jones, about to be a legend himself, starting an Indy next to deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Jagger, take it away. Drivers, start your engines! Several groups out there. We've even got Heritage Trans Am in the form of Wally Dollenbach uh, as well. So he's kind of racing alone, but he did that last year, but he's still got second overall. We've got a few new names that have come in to the season this year, including Justin Marks, who was brilliant uh, last year in his... Well, he had a dip, put a toe in the water last year, and he has come on full song. Tommy Dreesey uh, has upgraded his car for this season, but unfortunately with that penalty, we may not see the best of him today. Having said that, and watching Tommy over the years, you never count him out. Weaver is here. Poncho Weaver has prepared two great cars once again to dodge challenges. One in the hands of Paul Menard, another great, and of course, Boris said. So it's great to have them reunited, so to speak. But we've also got the battles of SGT, XGT and GT racing new faces and some old faces that have been around in this championship so even though we'll start as one race we're going to have four races in one effectively so we'll keep an eye on each of the championship leaders as we go through we've also got some nice nuances in blacktronics this year as well giving us the latest on yellow flags safety cars and so on so we've got the latest technology on a sport that is as old as 1966, it's the longest running road racing championship in North America. It was kind of cool to get Jagger Jones, who of course is a relative of the great Parnelli Jones, who also played his part in the Trans Am history. Alongside me, Jonathan Green, Joe Stevens. Joe, I kind of cut you off a little bit. Talk more about racing here at Sebring as we look at this track and, and, and talk more about the nuances of setting up for this particular place. 
That's right. Well, doing that here is pretty tough. We've got a lot of different contact surfaces here at Sebring, and most of them are really, really bumpy. We've got concrete with a lot of seashells in it. We've got pavement and asphalt, and of course, the sealer that joins the two. So you're battling the bumps, you're battling different contact surfaces, and of course, the sun is out, the track can get really hot and greasy, and uh, there's always the chance for surface conditions, et cetera. So it's always a little difficult to get a quick car here, but the key is to keep that tire up against the ground, use the bodywork, use the aerodynamic elements to really get the most out of the performance. One long straight, this almond straight coming into sunset here, the last corner at Sebring, and it's nice and wide there, but it's also encouraging to make the sevens. Also look out for turn seven, our bridge hall bend, because that is a heavy braking arm. Yeah, and a great passing point. Turn seven, you're gonna see a lot of those late, like late moment dive bombs, if you will, where you're trying to get every bit of performance out of the brakes and the tire to make a pass. Joe, I often get asked this, uh, is this an endurance race or a sprint race? Because what it is, it's 100 miles, and it feels like it goes on for a long time in this heat, but it really is 10 tenths racing, isn't it? You cannot uh, let up. Uh, you're hoping sometimes for a safety car or uh, an incident to slow things down because he is just hell-bent for leather right from the get-go. The strategy really comes down to your traffic and who's in front and who's in behind and how much pressure you're under. 100 miles is a long stint. It is sprint racing, certainly, but there is strategy incorporated to the actual track position and the environment that surrounds the driver. So there's a lot of crap that goes into the, the, you know, racing here at Sebring and in TA in general. As you saw there, of the previous winners, Chris Dyson is coming off two wins out of two here at Sebring. So that's why we obviously say he's the favorite he's the current champion. He blitzed it last year uh, in no uncertain terms. Uh, but the way that Chris Dyson races is a bit like Max Verstappen. I said that about Matt on yesterday. But Dyson's the same. He doesn't care who the competition is, and he doesn't care about who his teammate is. He just wants to win, and he'll do whatever it takes, and I mean fairly, uh, to do that. Uh, and Dyson, once he started winning, um, you know, when you've got a bit of a target on your back, when you've had a great racing father and come from a heritage of racing, uh, then there is no letter. There is no sort of, well, today I just I just made up the numbers, we'll come back next week. No, every weekend has to be perfect. And if you see Chris Dyson after taking a second place or a fourth place or anything else at first, he is down, down, down in the dump. But that's a good sign for a racing car. Oh, absolutely. That's what you're going to want. It's always a little bit easier to calm a driver down. It's almost impossible to get one fired up. So you want that intensity and that energy, and the top six really have that. I mean, only three-tenths, almost four-tenths, separate P1 from P3. So Chris Dyson has absolutely got a real shot to win. And then you look a little bit further back, Adam Andretti, a veteran, obviously of an incredible uh, family history of racing. He's here to win, too, and he's got every opportunity out there to do. But well, let me ask you this question. You're a team manager, and obviously, you know, you're, you're managing the team. Two drivers in your case. But here, in Chris Dyson's case, it's a case of he, he surrounded himself with two very, very good drivers. But he always does. If you can't get the two in the car, uh, and it, just so you know, who made, uh, who made Masood is out with an injured back at the moment, um, and hopefully will return soon. But he's brought in Andretti. Brabham, every time he gets in the car, either for Chris or with Chris, is either there or thereabouts. I remember the first time he came in at Coda, he won straight away. So how do you manage that? Well, I mean, it's tough, but any real manager is going to want to surround themselves with the best. And that's what Chris has done so well over the last few years, is he puts the best drivers that he can in the car, and he keeps the challenge on himself. And that's, that's absolutely brilliant, I think. So hats off to him for that. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a break up between the field but we'll keep up to date with who is where in each of the four categories justin marks with a chance to really set things alike with the start of his year he's going to have a busy year given that he's running nascar obviously he too a team manager and team owner in fact with pitbull running chastain and daniel suarez they were out at the 500 not that long ago and they'll be at it again. Got their first win at Cota actually last year. A brand new team in many ways. They brought out the Ganassi team. So uh, they've arrived in NASCAR as serious contenders and have already made it so. So Justin Marks now trying to walk the walk, talk the talk. But I have no doubt and no fear. He has an accomplished career anyway in his background, but mainly in sports cars. But he jumped to this like a duck to water. And he has taken the first pole position of the season interested to see what Tommy Greasy does from here. He's got a new car this uh, weekend. Uh, Paul Gentilosi, obviously, uh, running the team. Another good, great champion from the past. 
uh, but they'll want better results than last year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dreesy, you can never count him out. He's a real podium threat. I would suspect within the first lap, he'll pass between three to six cars. He's going to charge towards the front and give it everything that he's got. As a spectator to these TA races and now doing the commentary, this is my favorite part, watching the drivers build the heat in the tires, hearing those engines come by, all the spectators rushing to the fences, taking a look. They know something's about to go down, and, and, and I just love it. I'm super thrilled. Now listen, we, I just mentioned it's a 100 mile sprint effect. Now how does that affect the tires? We've got new tires, bigger wheels last year, but is it also a case of how smoothly you drive to make sure you manage those tires so that you've got underneath you something that's got grip within the last five, 10 laps? You really build a race car around the tire. So you got a new tire, you've got a new wheel, new brake, uh, there's, a, there's pretty much there, you, you start a whole new page. And it's gonna definitely change how these drivers approach this race compared to years past. So we're getting underway, we're on board, we'll be on board with several of the cars, we'll be keeping an eye on those dashes on the bottom right, you see where he is on track, in the middle is your speedometer and your RPM, look to the bottom left, it's always a good place to look, see how they're working the wheel each and every corner, especially here at Sebring, where the bumps come into such a play here, because they are literally physically fighting the car and holding it in position. See Chris Dyson's move and see how smooth he is, even though there's a net in front of his hand. You'll see how he moves that wheel, uh, and also, as you can see on the Jim Weed, uh, Weed on board, that uh, you'll also have his RPM, and uh, you'll also be able to see just exactly what kind of speeds we're looking at. What 180, 150 plus brake horsepower, unlimited in TA, and that's another one of the attractions to these drivers. Oh yeah, I mean for the power and the weight ratio of these cars, it's unmatched in motorsports. And to see them on a sports car course like this, 17 turns, super demanding surface, this is an incredible racing spectacle to watch. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see as we approach the green flag. One of the deepest fields we've had in the Trans Am series for a long time. We had a cracking race in TA2 yesterday. Let's hope we get the same again. The lights on the Honda Civic now go out, and that means we head down the heat haze of the Ullman Strait as we get ready to go racing for the first time this season. We start at the iconic Sebring racetrack. We head to New Orleans in just a couple of weeks, then another iconic circuit in Road Atlanta. Watkins Glen to come, Mid-Ohio, Road America, Cota is where it all finishes, but this is where it all begins. Somewhat aptly, a plane taking off in the background. They've been racing here since 1950. It's the home of the 12 hours of Sebring, and also where Trans Am began back in March, 1966 when Jochen Rindt, who went on to become a Formula One world champion, took the first win. We had Richard Petty here with his grandson yesterday. We had the name of Parnelli Jones' relatives in Jager Jones today. It doesn't get any better. We're coming out of sunset and we're getting ready to go racing. Joe Stevens alongside me, Jonathan Green, for the first race of the year. Watch out for the all yellow Dodge on the left hand side trying to get him jump on Justin Marks. But it's Marks who's on the mark straight away down the inside. The Jim Wheat cars right behind, one in pink, one in purple. They look to the inside, but it is going to be Justin Marks. Good start from Thwaites. Here comes Tommy Dreesey trying to make up five places early on. Expect Tommy Dreesey to come through the pack. He loves to race like this. We go on board for the first time with Chris Dyson, who does go into second place behind Justin Justin Marks, good clean start, Joe. Yep, absolutely. Chris Dyson made the most of that start, utilizing the inside line and being able to push out his competition. Now he's staring down Justin Marks and the race is on. Gotta be careful in this opening lap. We saw it at a restart yesterday in TA2 with Connor Mosak. Made a mistake and it looked to me as though it was just he, his tire temperature wasn't quite there. So you've got to kind of tiptoe for this first lap, regardless of the actual track temperature and ambient temperature. You never know if the tires are quite there. Absolutely. you got to get that tire temp in there to maximize the grip. Amy Ruman, great start. Looks like she's held her position. And that red Chevrolet is looking great as always. Ken Quaites has announced that this will be his last season. He's only been racing in TA a couple of years, but in that time he has become a very accomplished driver. Of course, he was a champion in the first ever XGT championship for production cars in his Audi R8 a couple of years ago. He's taken to this brilliantly. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's now got a big team and he's got a lot to manage, so he's deciding that this could be his swan song. But he, knowing him, the Franklin Roadman, will want to go out on a high and wish him well. Ken Waits looking for a good result out of the first race of the year. We look high above Sebring, the lake in the distance, the airport just ahead of the racetrack, which stands below as we head into the final 
complex and on to 17. A very tricky corner here and into the Almond Straight. Got to get that right as uh, already marks already weaving from side to side now is that more to get uh, more temperature in the absolutely tire, even under racing conditions yep so what he's trying to do is he's just trying to build heat in that tire he knows the car's telling him you don't have the tires up yet you better get on it he's got a great spread right now but chris dyson isn't going anywhere and uh the competition is on these cars really roar slightly quicker justin marks a 2050 to a 2058 from chris dyson so uh, even though he was weaving from side to side, Matt Brabham in third, Bernard in fourth, Boris said up to fifth place, Andretti in sixth, then Ruman, two-time champion Amy Ruman in seventh place in the McNichols Corvette, then Keith Grant coming into, this, coming into the series last year and looking to make a real name for himself, having got that podium the first time out of DIR. Then in ninth position is Ken Flakes, we're on board a moment ago, and then David Pintaric. Shout out to his new cameraman, Brian, who I met this morning. He'll be taking the pictures for David. On board that with Chris Dyson. And what do you see when you watch this racing driver? Everybody talks so um, glowingly about Chris Dyson and the way he races. Oh man, he's smooth. He's getting the most out of the brakes. We just saw him go into turn seven. Threshold braking, getting that car slowed down without locking up any of the tires, which is a, it's really a work of art in itself. Hitting the apex bolt in the entrance and exit right on his marks. And, and he's flying, he's flying. We got a separation of about one second between him and the leader. And uh, like I said before, the race is on right now and it is getting heated. I don't want to put the muckers on Tommy Greasy, who we're on board with now, and he's already chasing down the 74. Uh, but there was a little bit of notice of a possible blue smoke coming out of the back. Now, he does tend to be and run a, a sort of smoky mix, does Tommy Greasy. So I've been fooled by that in the past, but we'll keep an eye on Tommy Greasy. I always, I always keep an eye on Tommy Greasy because you just never know what's going to happen to Tommy. Oh, yeah. He's, he's honestly, he's running a great program. The car just looks incredible this year. It always does. And uh, that's the freedom of this rule book, is you can do things with the engine, you can do things that um, you might not be able to in other classes, and Dreesy's taking the most of it. He's already passed a bunch of cars. He's catching up to the TA field from starting from the back, and uh, this is looking like it's really exciting. Now Ken under pressure as well going into 17. Oh, Ken makes the pass. Excellent. Yeah, this is a great battle for the three of them. Dreesy at the back of this group. Greasy, of course, coming through the field bit by bit. He's had to start at the back, and he's already made it up several places. So we'll watch this battle as it unfolds. But Greasy now in 12th place. Butson it is. Matthew Butson and Ken Thwaites. Thwaites under big pressure, as you can see, as they dive into turn one. Greasy, though, trying to get back. The more I look at that Lucas car, the, well, there's, there's the smoke, I suppose, that we're talking about. Or was that dust and dirt just because he's running it quite low? Well, it's quite... He was loading up that right rear tire going through one and the speed and the g-force of these cars is just incredible it could just be a little bit of body work or the undercarriage of the car touching and scraping the ground it looks like he's he's not babying that car in any way so i'm assuming it's a non-issue and uh it'll more or less just buff itself out as the race goes on but he's making a move now into seven on the inside and it doesn't look like it's going to stick this time but he's going to keep on knocking on the door until they open it up this is Great start from Tommy Greasy. We're getting a bird's eye view straight on board with him. You can see the revs at the bottom. You can see the speed over 147, 40, 51 miles an hour. As he goes for there the overtake. Brilliantly done as we were on board. And Inside. that's how you do it in Trans Am Racing, Tommy. Yeah, and, and luckily the outside driver gave him a little bit of space. That was really close. It was a, it was a, a, a really direct move, and uh, now he's staring down Ken. So we're going to see what's happened. My guess is he's going to make a similar move here shortly. And while we were watching that, Matthew Brabham is channeling his father Jeff because uh, he's got so many accolades of that around this circuit. He just did a two minute six. That was almost two seconds quicker than Dyson in that last lap. So I don't know whether he missed a corner or he's just firing on all cylinders. But why? Oh, Tracy, Tracy's out. Yeah. He gets okay. it all right and gets it all wrong. Hasn't well, lost much position, though, going through 16. It looks like with some speed, but he did track left there. Not quite sure what the issue, if anything major. We'll see here in just a second. There is Matthew Brabham running in third at the moment. Here are the leaders. Justin Marks leading the way from Chris Dyson. They come across the line again. A 2019 from Justin Marks. Ooh, lock up from Justin Marks into one on the left front. He could have been really late in the brakes, but you can see Dyson and the uh, Jim Week cars are really pushing the pressure now. So this is going to be exciting. Ken, Justin, hang on here. We're still really early into this race, too. Yeah, Dyson Racing really pushing on on Justin Marks. If he didn't feel the pressure before, somebody parked up. One of the 
Alan Corvette, it could be Pierce or possibly uh, Aaron Pierce or possibly uh, the older car, which is Katie Bryson's car. She was down in 22nd coming into this race. Her I first, her debut. I think that may have been Aaron Pierce. Okay. I'm not totally sure. SGT car looks like it possibly uh, stopped on track. But it is, it is a safe distance away from the racing line, but unknown if that'll be a full course yellow or not. 27 lap race, and as we mentioned before, it's a full sprint, really. Here comes Greasy now on the weights. He got past him, made a mistake, but has recovered well. Tommy Greasy from Hollywood, California. He works in the biz of filmmaking, and he always has the script ready. And, of course, he's got Mav TV already on the car, so if you want to see his highlights, tune in on Thursday, because that's where you'll find on Yep. It's great to see Ken, who lacks a little bit of raw pace. He doesn't lack in that race craft. It doesn't look like he's driving his car too hard. Hopefully right now he's just managing the gap between the cars in front and Dreesy behind, and he's going to keep as much of that tire on the car as possible. But Dreesy is not having it as he tries to close the gap headed towards Bishop Finn. Yeah, just keep an eye on the other championships. Danny Lowry leading an XGT. Nathan Bird right behind him. Second in XGT, then in SGT. It's also a keeping an eye on the Florida man, a former champion, Lee Saunders, as we take a look at the 88 coming through shot. That's Nathan Bird now, who, uh, of course, is in XGT and chasing down Danny Lowry. Yeah, incredible racing thus far. Looking at this, the top of the front field as they rage past start finish. These cars are absolutely flying. Adam Andretti just had his fastest lap, and he's closing the gap to Paul Menard in front. It'll be interesting to see how those guys shake around for the next few laps. Great racing at the front. It's also to finish off uh, in GT, Billy Griffin chasing down the two other DTs of Tyler Hoffman and Chris Coffey and uh, Chris Dyson. In second place, now trying to put the hurt on Justin Martin. Wow, it's amazing how here at Sebring they allow the racing to continue and keep it at a sort of a local yellow like that uh, while they clear up the debris. But uh, Sebring, well known for their safety, bidding the 12, 12 hours and given the experience and the number of years they've been doing it. Um, they may take to, you know, a way of doing things that is different than others, but uh, we're still racing and that's what we love. Yeah, huge hats off to the safety workers here at Sebring International Raceway and everybody that makes these events come together. Dreesy looking Tommy. to the inside. It doesn't look like he's going to make it stick this time, but you can tell he's running out of patience. He wants to catch up, and Ken is under serious pressure right now. Yeah, you know, Tommy doesn't want to hold back. He doesn't like to race behind anybody for too long. He likes to get ahead and doesn't like to see cars going off in the distance. He's done a, such a good job to get up to this point, but now he's kind of come to a, a, a stop, if you will, in terms of progress anyway. And so he wants past Swates as well as, as quick as he can. But Ken Twaits, as he's shown in the past, is no mean fella when he's behind the wheel of a TA car. He's a lovely fella out of it, but he's a mean racer when he's in it. Tommy Greasy, though, doesn't take prisoners. Let's see what happens. Over 140 miles an hour as they go through Bishop and down towards 17. A crucial corner here to get right. Tommy takes a very tight line. And here he comes now into that right-hander. Yeah, you see that right now. Tommy's using every bit of the track whereas Ken is kind of cutting those corners a little too shallow. He's not quite getting to the inside or outside curving, and it's going to leave Dreesy another opportunity to make a move on the Franklin Road Apparel Chevrolet Camaro. Yeah, he's not going to quite pull it off this. He ducked in behind him, trying to get a draft as they go into Sunset again, and he'll live to fight again. There and here it comes is. Dreesy. He got a tighter line out of Sunset, and is the sun going down on Ken Waiters' hopes, I wonder, because here comes Dreesy. Outside, turn one. Here comes Dreesy, fold in, over, under move, late in the brakes. What's going to happen? Here comes the Lucas number eight, and this is great vintage Dreesy driving. Excellent Brilliant. overtake. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. Unfortunately, Ken's going to take a step backwards there, but now he's got a rabbit in front of him, and that is Tommy Dreesy in that bright blue Mav TV car, and it is flying. Let's see if he can hang on. Yeah, I haven't watched Ken a few years now. Ken likes actually these situations because he knows it's a long way. Oh, way to go. He's only six in the 27 gone yet. He just wants to kind of now, like you say, he's got somebody to uh, reference in front of him now. And he'll try not to lose sight of Tommy, but Tommy is already three or four car lengths as they dive into the bridge hall corner, into that right-hander, and get back on the power. You see him go sideways there using all 850 plus horsepower as we go back to this battle at the front. And it really is just that. Brabham still behind Ty uh, Dyson, and then leading the way is Justin Marks, but for how long, I wonder, Dyson really reeling him in now. Nothing between them as they come down 
through this track and at the back and look how close they are they're coming through some of the traffic now yep and Brabham still with the fastest lap thus far in the race, but both Justin Marks and Chris Dyson are running 201.8s, and these cars are absolutely flying, so there's really nothing to be split between the two. It's anybody's race at this point. Yeah, I'm looking at the times. 201.8 last time out for Justin Marks, Chris uh, Dyson a 201.8, so they're all on the same kind of pace. Brabham, of course, on the same pace. Boris said now up to fourth place as we've watched this three-way battle. Don't count out, Boris said. He's coming and coming fast. He just did a 2.02. One, uh, so he's quicker than the guys ahead of him in that Dodge Challenger. Now, will he challenge? I wonder. We'll see him in a moment, but uh, no question about it. Here comes Boris Said, and he's taking Adam Andretti with him. We've got two Jim Weed Ford Mustangs knocking on the door of Justin Marks right now. There's less than a second a second that separates the three of those cars, and uh, I don't know what's going on, but it's possible Justin Marks has driven the car a little too early, a little too hard in the early stages, and now Dyson's going to have an opportunity, but it looks like right now they're playing the waiting game, and they're going to wait for Justin to drive off a little bit, and we'll see what happens. So far, caution free. I'll probably now put the muckers on it, but it's Marks, Dyson, Brabham, Sed, Andretti. Good start from Boris Sed. Really good start. They dropped Menard down to six, but he's still in contention. Then it's uh, Grant in seventh, Ruman eighth, Pitarek in ninth, Greasy is up to tenth now. He's got a head of Twakes. Then it's Butson, Dollenbach in the Masters car in thirteenth. And yes, that is Wally Dollenbach out there again. The stability of those Ford Mustang Jim Weed cars is really great into the brake zones. Those cars look really healthy. It's a, it's a different story with Justin right now is what it looks like. He's a little bit more nervous, the rear of the car, under those big braking, and Dyson's able to constantly close that gap under braking, and it looks like it's fairly effortless. With this. Yeah, you know, obviously there's a lot of development going on with Justin Marks and his team, and I think they were not surprised, but I think they were surprised at how quick they were uh, in, in just one lap to get the pole like that. So still in development for him, and uh, we'll see whether, you know, they, they dial it in better as the season goes on. Back in the pits, though, uh, is that uh, the car we saw stuck out on track? I think it is. Is it Aaron I Pierce? So. I think it is. Yep, it is. It's Aaron Pierce in the SGT Chevrolet Corvette. And, um, oh, no, is that Kaylee? I think it is that Kaylee, might be Bryson, Kaylee yeah, her first run. Yep, and that car is actually owned by the Aaron Pierce group. Yes. Now, fortunately, it looks like a retirement for her. She's in pit lane. It looks like about to exit the vehicle. The number 26 is all, out. All I can say is welcome aboard. She's from Oklahoma. She's a dirt tracker by heart. That's how she started out. And this was her first ever Trans Am debut. So uh, really, really impressive. She's also done some SVRA this weekend to really self, get herself dialed in. So good experience. I don't know why the car came to a halt, but uh, we'll find out, I'm sure, as we finally get a look at Boris Said with Andretti all over the back of him. This is a good battle. Boris Said versus Adam Andretti. Two great American race names going at it. Boris Said Jr., his son, uh, racing also in TA2 this year. Uh, and Boris is a car he's driven as well behind him in Menard's car, of course, both prepared by Poncho Weaver. But Boris said the older he gets, the quicker he is. Well, I got to be honest, Tommy Andretti in the all gram Ford Mustang, I'm rooting for him. I think he's got a real opportunity here, and he's chasing down a car that he's actually driven before. That's right. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, argy-bargy they get as the race goes on. Absolutely. Well, Adam Andretti has won in pretty much every mark there is in Trans Am. He's had a bumper weekend this weekend, jumping in to this car, which is, of course, the car of Humaid Massoud coming in as a replacement uh, when Humaid couldn't make it. But he also has a regular run in TA2. Busy year then ahead for Adam and Dretti. Good battle, though, this between he and Boris said, as Menard also finding his way through traffic in that day glow. Weaver Challenger, beautifully prepared. I was actually talking to Nathan Hearn. He's, he loves those challenges too. I know he's out there yeah. on the Mustang, but uh, your guy, uh, he, he's, he's got a bit of a soft spot for those challenges. Absolutely. He won the championship. Uh, oh, it looks like Ken Twaits a little off track there. Uh, and he might be being passed right now, but you're right. Nathan Hearn won a championship in uh, uh, TA2 Australia. And uh, that was in a Dodge Challenger. I wonder why we, we I've often asked, been asked this, why the challenges are more prominent, both in history and modern. Uh, and then somebody else parked up his that Amy Ruman. I think that was Amy that Ruman. Could have been Amy Ruman. Amy Ruman, and it looked like a bit of track debris on the uh, exit of 15. I'm not quite sure exactly what happened there. We'll get a replay shortly, but 
uh, it looks like there's a possibility that Amy Roman has run into some problems. Justin Marks continues to lead in TA, in TAH, that's the historic Trans Am, Wally Dallenbach leading in that, XGC is led by Danny, Larry and GT is run, is in the lead with uh, Tyler Hoffman at the moment, and SGT, as we mentioned already, Kylie Bryson is out. Adam we do Andretti. have a full course yellow. Yeah, full course caution, just as Adam Andretti and that all Grand Ford Mustang had its own personal fast lap. So he is definitely trying to reel in Boris said. The top five in this class, incredible. And with this restart, you never know what's going to happen. Joe, I'm glad I got you here because in a caution situation, either you or one of the chief engineers will get on the radio. What, as a team, do you tell your driver and does it vary from driver to driver? It does. It totally does. Usually what you're going to tell for a front-running driver is what is the pace of the cars around me. If you would have a delta or a split, average split between the car in front and the car behind, that's the real critical data that the driver would need. But there also might be, hey, run up to the pit wall, take a look at my splitter. Do I have a tire rub? Evaluate the conditions of the car. And then you're going to be getting information on the car of what is the car doing, reminding the driver, hey, check your brake bias. How much front brakes do you have in relationship to the rear brakes and all of those things? We had the question about Kaylee Bryson. Uh, Bryson. Let's find out what happened to her fence down in the pits with her. Well, I'm with Kaylee Bryson down here in the pits. It seemed like you were pretty fast there at first. What happened, Kaylee? Yeah, I think we were experiencing some motor problems. It wasn't running quite like it should and making some weird noises. So decided to pull it in, would rather not blow it up, and diagnose the problem and fix it for next race. So first impressions of your first Trans Am race, how did it go? It was pretty good. You know, I did uh, the TA2 car in SVRA today and ran ninth. And, you know, just kind of starting slow before we jump in with the TA2 and all the big guns because these guys are really experienced. And this is a really, really top-notch form of racing. So, uh just getting my feet wet right now. This is my first uh, road course race, so uh, looking forward to the next time. Kaylee Bryson, thank you. Sorry for the luck, but uh, gentlemen, back up to you. Great stuff, and just a little footnote. Yes, she's just getting her feet wet, but I think we're going to be hearing that name. That is the only female ever in the history of the Chili Bowl, the famous dirt track race, to make the feature race two years in a row. She is going places. Watch out for Kaylee Bryson from Oklahoma. As we're under caution, we're going to take a short break from Sebring. We'll be right back at the resumption of this race here in TA. I'm Richard Petty, and you might say I've had a fairly successful driving career. And you know the secret of my success? Having a good support team around me when I need it. Whether you're a route driver, over the road trucker, or you're interested in driving special purpose vehicles, Clean Harbors is the kind of place where you can build a long driving career. Do yourself a favor, give Clean Harbors a call. Welcome back to Sebring International Raceway here in Central Florida. We're under caution here in our TA race, 10 laps gone on the 27th, so we're not at the business end just yet, but we're at a critical stage as we're on board with Tommy Dreese, who's made good progress, and he'll be actually quite enjoying the chance to maybe just take a break. He's behind David Pintarek, and he's got a chance of scoring some big points here today. An important race, start of the season. You don't want to be losing points early on. He got a penalty after an infringement uh, before the race even started. Three drivers, including Kylie Bryson, actually ping uh, for that infringement. And so Dreesy started way back than his qualifying position. Uh, they qualified late evening last night for cooler conditions, but uh, Tommy at the moment doing a good job of keeping in the hunt, and that's what it's all about. But a good start also from Andretti and Boris said as they chase down the top three. 
Alongside me is Joe Stevens. And Joe, as we've got a little time under caution, your thoughts so far on the first race of the year? Um, this is just so intense. Starting off, these cars are door to door. And I have to ask you the question, Jonathan, what's going to happen if Brabham's pace continues to be better than Dyson's? Is there any team orders in that group? You know, I, it's a very good question because I really don't know how Dyson would play that because at this stage of the year, with the confidence he's got in his own abilities, I actually think he would let Brabham go through if he knew that Brabham's car was faster. Because more importantly to Dyson right now is having the team win the race uh, and him finishing second. And he's got more chance of that happening if Brabham can win the race. Yeah, I think, you know, Chris Dyson as a driver and as a guy, he's so true grit with his racing that he's not going to allow a team order to, uh, you know, present itself and change the running order. I think what he's going to do is if he's going to win or he's going to place better than his teammates, he's going to earn it. You know, I, I don't want to toot his horn too much, but, you know, I've watched Matthew Bradley over the years. I've watched him in SBRA. I've watched him win in every single seater formula and super trucks. Uh, he's been a world champion in that. There isn't anything he gets into that he doesn't win in, including Trans Am. Uh, he's such a talent. He's still at the height of his game in Indy Lights. He was vying for the championship last year, Indy Next as it's called now. He could absolutely throw himself into a 500 situation uh, in a single seater, if not an Indy car. Uh, I mean, if he had a bag of money, I, I, what this kid could do, I have no idea. He, I know he has that famous name, just like an Andretti, but boy, does he talk the talk and walk the walk. What a guy. Um, and there, there isn't anything he can't do. Now, I, I'm telling you right now, we're seeing it play out right in front of us as they continue to scrub their tires and keep them clean and up to temp, entering turn 17 behind the Honda Civic safety car. So anything can happen at this point in time. I think what we'll see here in the coming laps, lap here is if there's any lap traffic, we're going to have a lucky dog effect where the slower cars are going to hit pit lane and the pack so when we do go green it's all business in front of you there's no lap traffic everything is going to be for position let's head down to the pit lane and obviously leading the race justin marks let's hear what the latest is from his camp with ben sissel jj talking to justin marks how's he what's he sound like on the radio he sounds real good. The, the car's, uh, you know, it's hot out there, so the track's real greasy and slick, so forward bite's a problem. You know, we're working on uh, trying to get the brakes right. You know, it's, it's got a little bit of a long pedal, so he's just going to try to deal with it for now and go from there. Now, there's uh, two cars coming back, and they look like they're just hunting him down. What are you saying about that? Yeah, I'm giving him every lap, you know, how far they are behind him, and obviously Matty just moved into second, and I know he was coming pretty hard, so... We're going to find out, you know, what we got here. So well, I don't know if the Dyson had team orders or not, but we're going to find out. Good insight there from Showtime Motorsports. Gentlemen, back up to you. Oh, that's fight and talk. I'm loving it. And I'm also very interested to see what Boris said. If I know Boris, he'll see this as a huge opportunity, as will Adam Andretti, to get past or at least fight with Dyson because the gap that he was going to have to you know, come back at uh, the top three on, has now gone down to nothing. So it's all about this restart, and Boris said, knows what he's doing in those situations. Then again, so does Bradman and Dyson. Yeah, we just saw JJ with JRI. He's working with Justin Marks this year. And talk about the talent that these TA1 teams have. And JJ's a great example of that. And he's kind of calling it out as he sees it. He's not sure what team orders are going on in the Dyson group. But the, he obviously sees that his driver's having a little bit of trouble with the brakes. We saw that lockup from Justin Marks into turn one earlier, talking about a, a, you know, a long pedal, which means the braking performance of that car is being reduced as the track temps in that greasy track seems to increase. So uh, things are going to get a, a little crazy, I think, on this restart. Well, we're hearing from race control that the restart will be this lap as we tiptoe through the trees. And a beautiful day here at Sea Creek. Hardly a gust of wind here, and that's rare. So it's hot though, and I'm sure physically, uh, am I right in saying you can get hotter when you're under safety because you don't get the, the air from the car? Absolutely, and so the brakes, they may cool off just a little bit because we're not hammering them for the 17 turns of Sebring International Raceway, but everything else starts to heat soak, and that includes the driver. Track temp, about 95 degrees Fahrenheit today, so it is certainly a greasy track surface. 
on board again with Tommy Greasy. He'll be looking forward from ninth position to get a restart and get a jump on David Pintarek. But uh, Pintarek almost uh, enjoying his racing more than ever. He had an illness last year that he thought might curtail him racing any further, but he's back in action and you delighted to be back in the, the famous generator. 57. It's the generator. Justin Marks, Matt Brabham, Chris Dyson, down the Almond Strait, keeping the temperature in the tires. Interesting what you say about the brakes, absolutely it's right. It's uh, uh, not much else cools down, but only just. Uh, and they're still red hot, I'm sure, when they get to the restart. But a little bit of weaving to get the mechanical grip in the tires as we come down towards sunset again. Yeah, lights are off. The Honda Civic safety car, we're about to go green, entering turn 17. The, the safety car will peel off into pit lane, and uh, here comes the action, to say the least. Well, I wouldn't say that Justin Marks is inexperienced, but in Trans Am terms, he's probably not done too many restarts, especially from the front, and he's got the maestro behind him in Chris Dyson and Brabham who is due another win but here comes Boris Sedd and Adam Andretti Paul Menard behind it doesn't come any more star studded for our restart here in TA here we go and David Paterik making big moves on the inside and we are hauling the mail into turn one right now running order for the first three looks like we're gonna have some changes as we're three wide into turn one. Oh, 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 Boris Sedd squeezing him down Paterik as you say went to the outside Greasy to the inside, excuse me, to the outside, now back in line, and he's behind Menard, who got a scintillating restart, and has gone ahead of Tommy Dreesy. So it's all change at the front, but a good restart from Justin Marks, just what he wanted as he heads under the bridge, and down towards six and seven for the restart time on lap 12. Almost halfway through this race now, and things started to hot up nicely. Yep, it was a fly into turn seven, now we're going to be testing those brakes, which we're just heat soaking a little bit. But it looks like the running order stays the same, but Dreesy is all over that car in front. Yeah, Paul Menard, who of course is another one who's come back to Trans Am after racing in many other series and say take some time off. But he did, you know, drips and drabs of TA racing, sort of dipped his toe back in. And he too, once he got a Poncho Weaver car, like Boris said, rejoining the, the old team, if you like. Uh, is back with a vengeance, but there is the Lucas number eight, Tommy Dreesy. Yeah, such a great looking Ford Mustang, right behind that Pancho Weaver car, and these guys are flying through the high speed turn, 140 mile an hour entry speeds, and then look at the decel rate, hard on the brakes again as they go into the 14, 15, 16 complex, which is where we saw Amy Ruman have that problem earlier. Well, I mentioned that uh, Trans Am started its history here back in 66 and it's Ford Mustang versus Chevrolet Camaro versus George Challenger some 57 years later just as we wanted here we go marks into sunset all over him is the number 20 Jim Weed of Chris Dyson the champion he takes a very tight line and gets as close to marks as he's been absolutely on his bumper right now we could see an over under like we saw before into turn one Dyson eyeing the inside Gets a fender on him. Grab him in second. My, my, my foul. It is Matthew Brabham at the restart. Caught me out because the pink and the uh, purple very similar. So now it is Brabham who's going after Marks. And I think actually at the restart that was probably planned as we talked about, right? Yeah, I think so. I think what right now what they're going to try to do is get uh, Matt right behind Justin Marks and really try to put the pressure on right now Chris Dyson doesn't have any real competition behind him a good gap so he can just take it a little bit easier let's just see how much of the equipment we can get Justin Marks to use and then maybe team orders will play again where Chris Dyson will pass them both yeah that's another thing we didn't actually mention because you use Brabham as the hair as the aggressor uh, he's not going to be doing the championship for the whole season so it just Dyson could sit back and watch them fight it out and like you say, use their equipment and then team orders perhaps may come into play later. But I think Brabham will just try to take the lead and try to help his buddy get into second place. Meanwhile, Boris said though, is changing the game a little bit in fourth place because Dyson may be looking ahead, but he needs to look in the mirrors as well because here comes Andretti and Boris said as well. Yep, Andretti's done a great job keeping the tire underneath him. That Ford Mustang from Allgram is looking really great, and these cars are flying in again to the turn 14, 15, 16 complex, which is a super technical part of this track, and they are nose to tail. I have to say, hats off to 
Justin Marks, he's soaking up the pressure here. He's done 13 laps at this pace, and he's been under immense pressure from first Dyson, and now Brabham, who definitely is a stronger aggressor when it comes to challenging at the moment. Let's see where and when he goes for it. Look at these bumps, too, as these cars bounce Whoa. up and down. And we're seeing the move to the inside. Matt Brabham on the 99 of Justin Marks. Is he going to be in front coming the exit of turn 17? Well, I said aggressive. That was really impressive. I don't know if he's going to pull it off, but he's not quite held on to it, but he got a great inside line there, and they all bounce down the main straight past our commentary position. Dyson now in a struggle in the 16, Jim Wheat car to hold off, Boris said, but it's a five-way battle at the front because Andretti's joined it. This is TA Racing, folks. This is the best that it gets. Look at the fireball come ripping out of the side of that Ford Mustang and the Jim Weed driven by Chris Dyson. This is incredible. Justin Marks is doing his absolute best to maintain a solid racing line while playing defense. This is the chess game. This is the racecraft that they talk about. I'll tell you what, racing purists, this is like go-kart racing with 850 plus in the back. Unbelievable stuff. Great. Yeah. Look at that Dodge Challenger too. Beautiful car, absolutely in the hunt here. And uh, this is gonna be insane as those tires continue to go up. And there, you can't fit a piece of paper between the front two. Here he and comes. we see another move to the inside again. Classic overtake, and Brabham's gonna make it stick, but Marks comes back at him! Justin, Justin Marks. Marks! That is great racing! Yeah, he said, no way, I'm not giving that place up. Absolutely, he did not back down from the outside, and he stuck to it, and, and it's not going to be easy. This is great racing. Dyson's slow. Dyson's suddenly gone from third to fifth in a matter of two bends. You know, I'm not sure if that was a little bit of defensive play because they're racing so hard if they were to come together. But what's going on? Nah, that's that's mechanical, surely. Yes. He's off the line, slowed right down. And yeah, he might, he might have not wanted to go into the fray, but... No, that is not what we want to see. And that is a big line for the headlines for the press release tonight because Dyson, the current champion, has been bulletproof in TA in the last couple of years. And his first venture out, to be fair, his season didn't start brilliantly last year and it just got steadily better. But uh, that is real disaster for Chris Dyson. I'm sure Ben Sissel will be on it immediately. But meanwhile, Brabham is still like a dog with a bone with Justin Marks and here comes Andretti he's got past Boris said so in all of that going on Andretti's got past said he's up to third and he really wants this now he wants to fly the flag for Dyson uh, he got this as a one-off drive and now he can take it to Matthew Brabham and I said to him when he was up here in commentary I want a classic Brabham Andretti fight two great names of motor racing from worldwide different sides of the world but two Great proponents of motor racing in their family, and here we go again. Lap 15 of 27. I think now we were talking about team orders. There can only be one with the Dyson crew, and that is go. Matt Brabham's got to keep the pressure on and take as many points as he can from that Franklin Road Apparel car. He's got to do everything he can to get in front of Justin Marks and stay there. Yeah. Well, he's been the aggressor since the restart, and he took that position away. Fooled me because I couldn't see it immediately, and I thought it was Dyson putting the pressure on but of course it was Brabham and in fact that inside move was just absolutely brilliant but he didn't quite pull it off and he's still trying it he might try it again this time and all the while Adam Andretti just waits in the shadows as these oh, two cars yeah yeah yep, yep, it is this could very well be another full course caution yeah well he was tripling away he was uh, trickling down the track a little bit slowly but now suddenly he stops up so sadly for Chris Dyson it's ended on track. Uh, let's see if he's out of harm's way, or it means we're on the same. Now, meanwhile, Menard is here. It looks like Menard fell back to 12th, and we are full course yellow here. Yep. So again, we uh, catch our breath, but there's a lot happened in the two full course yellows, in the laps we've had in between. So, Poncho Weaver is the man leaning down, just talking to Paul Menard. And it says that Boris, uh, we've heard that Boris said has a vibration in the car. Um, and we're going to try to see if we can get a hold of either Poncho or Paul Menard, who's parked up. Obviously, we can't speak to Chris Dyson as he's out on track, but we might hear from what happened to Paul Menard. So it's all drama here. Joe Stevens, Johnny Green, bringing the action from TA. And 
just like yesterday, we've got plenty of drama in this one. And it's far from over by any means. We are under caution. I wonder what the story is with David Pinteric, who had just a dynamite start. Jumped two to three places into turn one, but now has also looked like he's fallen back several laps. I show three plus laps on his timing and scoring sheet. So definitely a lot going on drama, as you said, Jonathan, for sure. Yeah, we lost Kaylee Bryson. We lost Amy Ruman. Uh, we've now lost Paul Menard. Uh, Boris uh, said he's complaining of vibration. That's why he's dropped a few places. Adam Andretti now up to third place. Let's head down to Ben Sissel and see what the latest is and find out what happened to Paul Menard. Hey, I'm here with Poncho Weaver who builds these beautiful cars. And Poncho, last couple laps I've been hearing some shifting problems down the front straight, but what's your driver saying is wrong? Yeah, that's exactly it. It looks like we lost a dog ring in fourth gear and uh, some of the pieces might have come apart and now it's affecting second gear so we really can't hold our own position no reason to be out there and cause an issue for the guys that are really running for this program and uh, you know Paul did a wonderful job this weekend techniques uh, Millennium steal it all these guys that have been part of this thing we can't do it by ourselves and uh, we need their help but we're out for today we'll be back though nice and down. stay with me here because uh, we saw Boris come by and it looked like the front right fender of his car was shaking really bad. I've heard some bad vibration. And then Paul Menard, if you don't mind, man, this has got to be heartbreaking. I know you really want to have a good showing here, and it just seems like you've got some rough luck here. Uh, that's all good. You know, Poncho gave me the opportunity to come down here and um, we show that uh, the Weaver chassis have speed. Um, yeah, I had a little bit of trouble with fourth gear in qualifying yesterday, and it, it just won't stay in fourth gear today. It keeps popping out. And then it started popping out second and third gear also. So instead of hurting the engine, we're just going to park it. Nice. Well, Paul Menard, I love having you in the series. I'm sorry about your luck here at Sebring. But let's uh, run over here real quick, Tony, and talk to Boris Sed's team because I saw when Boris came by, that car was really shaking. So uh, where's AJ? Hey, Stevie. So I saw Boris's front end. What's going on? Well, I guess Dyson, he got something happened to Dyson. Boris zigged when he should have zagged and he hit the back of Dyson and knocked some body loose work or body work loose we're, we're telling him to go let it go so no tire rub you think it's just that front maybe the clap the little clasp came off or something yeah when I went out to the wall it looks like the clasp came loose and it's just shaking real hard on the right side so we're gonna go we're, go we're going for it I love it and Joe Stevens this is gonna go back to you Stevie Ray great crew member and you know when it's heat on high here in these races explain that to the crowd if you don't mind He's saying, yeah, it's pretty heated down there, but you know what this is like. Oh, absolutely. I've known Stevie for as long as I've been in Trans Am, and, and just to speak to all the talent and experience behind these TA1 cars, Stevie's another shining example of that. He's, he's built some wonderful TA and TA2 cars in the past, and uh, it sounds like there was some small contact, which is kind of the name of the game, and uh, when you get to speed, that carbon fiber or Kevlar or fiber-reinforced plastic pieces, they'll start to fly and flap around in the wind, if it's not disrupting the car and its performance or the driver's ability to maintain control of the vehicle, you're going to deal with it. It's going to affect the performance of straight line speed, certainly, Jonathan. But uh, really what it comes down to is if the car is going to drive, the driver is going to drive it. Yeah. You know what's also coming to play now? Tommy Dreesey weaving from side to side in the all blue Lucas. You see him there. He's now got Dreesey, uh, sorry, he's got Boris said in front of the man you're looking at right now, who's already complained of a few issues himself. So Dreesey's got a chance, he's fifth at the moment to get into the top four, then maybe challenge uh, Andretti for third. So Dreesey's come right through the field, and with him has come Wally Dollenbach now up to seventh for the Historics. So it's a big day. Keith Grant is also in the mix, he's in sixth position. They've dropped Matthew Butson to, uh, what, eighth position, Kent Waits is ninth. Danny Lowry leading XGT, he's in tenth overall, uh, and, but Nathan Bird is still with him in that battle. GT's led by Tyler Hoffman. And so we've got some great battles going all the way through, including in SGT as well. Aaron Pierce still out there running well. But uh, so a real change around in terms of the actual battles as we go back on board with Tommy Dreesey, who has gone from what looked like a bad day at the office to now a potential podium. Yeah, absolutely. And if I may drop to SGT, Chris Coffey yes. has moved up the running orders. He is now, it looks like, sitting in position 14 overall. 
and uh, what an incredible story. That car as well entered this event with a little bit of transmission issues. ABS speed sensor and all the complexity of the of the wiring system on that car. He entered in a little bit handicapped, but he's been able to keep the car underneath him, move up the pack, and he's, he's still in the race, which is great. Chris Coffey and that Norwood Auto Italia Maserati. Yeah, he's chasing down Tyler Hoffman, and between them is the leader of SGT, that's Lee Saunders. Uh, Lee Saunders, of course, a local man from Florida, loves that Viper. Uh, great to have him back in the championship, the former champion himself. So we are at the back of the circuit, waiting for a restart, which hopefully will take us to the checkered flag. A sprint, if you will, a short number of laps. There's Lee Saunders. Absolutely, and just behind... Chris Coffey, the race is on, but leading that pack, if I believe, is that Audi R8. Yeah. Beautiful car. And that is Hoffman, I believe? Yep. Tyler Hoffman. Tyler Hoffman and the Bennett Bridge Hall pit box is Audi R8 is leading that class. And that's a fierce battle. Those guys are going to be nose to tail when this thing goes green. And we've got 11 laps to go. Yeah, there's a long way to go, yeah. And it's also Mercedes of Lowry versus Porsche 911 of Nathan Bird in XGT. Uh, XGT, if you're wondering, was Super GT uh, was the original class, and then GT, and then we brought Extreme GT into the fold just to allow more cars of that kind of ilk to come in. And uh, Ken Twait, who you're watching out on track right now, is the first to win in an Audi R8 in that class, uh, and so it's about three years old now, and still starting to get more and more cars and different cars too. Great to have the Mercedes on board this year. Yeah, great job from Ken thus far. Started 11th, has moved his way up through 9th, kept the car clean and underneath him. And uh, he's, he's staring down the barrel of a lot of really great uh, you know, drivers, but it looks like we might be going green. Yes, we will. The Honda Civic's lights are off, which means Justin Marks in the track has 99, leads the way. Same number as Suarez, so nice kickback from his own team there. And uh, behind him, though, Matthew Brabham. Desperate for a win. Every time he wins, he makes the headlines. Can he beat a NASCAR team manager here? We go. Good restart also by Tommy Dreese. He's got on the outside as he did last time. And he's already challenging for third place now coming into the first quarter. Yep, we've got all that bodywork shaking on Boris set of the Dodge Challenger. The damage, unfortunately, the front splitter. So Tommy Dreese just behind Boris said as they dive into three then. Andretti still third. Forrest still fourth, and then we're on board with fifth place Tommy. dreesy has got great forward drive, it looks like. Despite all the ambient conditions working against him, he's got plenty of power to put down as he chases down Boris, who has that bodywork damage and a move. Here comes Andretti. And in fact, Brabham and Andretti have both gone past Marks. I wonder if Marks made a mistake or has really got into trouble because he's now gone right off track and slowed right down this, the puncher, I reckon. It's possible that he had a brake failure going into turn seven. Okay. And we heard that tire locking up, and now he's kind of getting off the, 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 the run surface. And uh, that's kind of what you have to do when you have a brake, when you have a brake failure. So unknown exactly what's going on, but it looks like possible issues for the 99. What a shame. Justin Marks was doing everything right, and uh, suddenly it all went up in flames. Uh, drive through for uh, the restart potentially for Tommy Dreesey. We'll see if it happens. Uh, but uh, he was very quick off the mark on the restart. So that would be another twist to the tail. It's all happening today. So the leader has gone out. Matt Brabham now leads this race for the Dyson Racing Team. Tommy Dreesey is in second place, but is he? Because if he's got a drive through, that will all come to naught. And that will move Boris said with that damaged car up the board. And Andretti's got a chance of a win here. <laughs> Absolutely. Adam Andretti and that all cramped Ford Mustang is now putting pressure on the leader, Matt Brabham. Dreesey, I saw him come across the line somehow four wide. Uh, certainly it looks like it might be worth a drive through penalty. We'll see if he serves it. Um, but regardless yep, he, of that, he does. He does. Okay, so Matt Brabham and Adam Andretti are now fighting for the lead of this race. And Ken Thwaites moves his way up yet again. So, Dreesey in the pits. He does serve his drive through penalty. There's our XGT battle. A beautiful yellow headlighted Mercedes coming at us into turn one in the 42. 
What a beautiful GT3 Mercedes. I know. Reminds me of the Joker racing from Mark Austin, whose uh, home is in Texas. Not here for this race, but very well will join the series yeah, yeah. later in the year. Another great-looking Mercedes. Yeah, if you ever get a close-up look at one of those cars, they are amazing to watch. And the intakes on the front are just huge. The hood, the, the venting, yeah. and the efficiency of the aero through the front of that car is really a work of art. So what a change around in this race. It's all happened in just a matter of minutes as we look at Ken Twaits again, who's back in the uh, fray, so to speak, as we go on board with him. Yep, safety workers again. Shout out to all the safety workers that it looked like are grabbing the 99 at Justin Marks as the race goes on with a local yellow. Ken Twaits is in now the top five, staring down uh, Wally Dollenbach, who is in the Historics TA. And this is just another great battle. This is, this is incredible. We've got battles in the front, the mid, and back of the pack. And uh, it looks like Chris Coffey's making some way, too, as he shakes and bakes through the, uh, th through the traffic. What a story. Wally Dollenbach in the top five. In fact, he was runner-up here last year in this race. Uh, but this is such a more dramatic race than was last year with Matt Brabham now leading the way. We've had several different leaders. Uh, obviously, Justin Marks led for a bit. Dyson held on for a second, but then he conked out. Now it's Brabham's turn. Andretti's behind him. You can see it through the heat haze. Uh, and they are teammates, remember. They're both representing uh, one in the all Grand car, one in the Jim Week car, but obviously Dyson going out. And a drive-through penalty for Dreesey. So we get ready for what should be seven laps of absolute pure adrenaline. Here come the XGT boys. Randy Hale chasing down. That Mercedes. Oh, some more splitter damage from the uh, Black Ford Mustang TA car on the inside of turn 17. Super easy to do. As you see these cars bounce over these bumps, the suspension, the bodywork, the chassis itself just being abused completely as they drive so hard through that turn. Lee Saunders in that incredible Dodge Viper giving it all he's got. Yep, Lee Saunders leading in SGT. Leading in XGT, it's Danny Lowry. There's the 91 coming through shot. That's Tyler Hoffman. He's in GT. I'm so getting, it's all big change around. I'm getting word that Boris sets in pit lane for a right front tire. Ah. So Boris also, it's not been a good day at the office for the Poncho Weaver team. And two great challenges, but sadly not able to challenge either of them today. Paul Menard going out and looks as though Boris said it's going to follow suit as he comes into the pit. So it's Brabham, Andretti, now Keith Grant. We've hardly mentioned him, he's come from nowhere. And Keith Grant, who was on the podium in his first ever TA race, is back in the hot seat. Dolan back up to fourth place, Ken Twaits is fifth. That's important to be there in the end, and that's what Kent's got going on and Matt Brabham, and uh, absolutely so much going on. It looks like some splitter repair with some um, high-strength adhesive tape going on on the 24 right now for TA. If you have damage to the front of your car and that bodywork, what it can do is it can disrupt the, the cooling of the radiator. Yeah. And if you're not moving air through that core, your engine temp's going to go through the roof almost immediately. Well, we've seen it in uh, mid-Ohio, and you'll remember this, that when you get grass in the grill, which often happens with the grass being so close in mid-Ohio, that it gets in the grill, and you're, like you say, your engine temperature, and I remember it happening to Ernie Francis Jr., his temperatures went through the roof. Yep. And uh, they had to come in. Say you're doing absolutely what you should be doing as a driver, and the car in front of you puts two tires off into the grass. Suddenly, the car behind has a uh, has a front duct that's nearly completely clogged, and you got yourself a problem. And it looks like Ken Twaits yeah. got around Wally. This is awesome racing here as they fly through turn one. More of those bumps that we're talking about as these cars are just all in the mail. Absolutely. Wally Dolenbach, one of the greats, uh, multiple TA champion or Trans Am champion, uh, coming back to throw his hook. At some more racing and just as quick as ever, but now Twaits is, uh, uh, Twaits is ahead of him in fourth place and now chasing down Keith Grant, who will want that podium badly as Adam Andretti continues in second and Matt Brabham continues to lead this race. The acceleration of these cars, you know, 2,500 pounds, almost 900 horsepower in some cases. Yeah. This, I mean, it's just, it's wild. The tires are huge. This is like go-kart racing on steroids here. Right. And, yeah. and we're seeing two vets right now door to door at Sebring. Well, let me ask you a question. You talk about unlimited. Um, you know, where does, where's the point of no return? I mean, can you, I mean, if you had a thousand horsepower, you wouldn't get any grip, would you? 
uh, that's the thing. Like when the conditions allow, running on seven cylinders versus eight could help you. Like for example, right. Lime Rock in the rain. Less power usually means more grip, more forward drive. These cars, you really got to be on top of the throttle pedal. Ken Plates is exactly doing that at the moment. You can see his RPM, you can see the gauge, uh, the actual gauge above where it tells him where to change gear and what's going on with the revs. Yep. And Oh, and he's wide again. He's uh, wide that, again in 14. That's where he was wide earlier. It was, but I saw his speed at 156 miles an hour through Bishop's Bend. That's the fastest I've seen him yet. So he overdid it a little bit, gained some time, and then lost some time. On board with Ken Twaits. Great character. Full throttle down the Olden straight and down into the last corner. Now he breaks heavily. Just flipping the throttle as he goes through. Here comes the Mercedes again. This has been a good battle, and in fact, they're going to be overall. Danny Lowry, sixth overall, but leading in XGT. Fantastic stuff. Absolutely, and we're going to be looking at five laps to go here shortly. And uh, at this point, it could, I think it could still be Adam's race. We're not quite sure, but Adam could very well have this one won if he can catch Matt Brabham, who's still leading the front of the TA pack. So then, we'll go through... The rest of them in GT, Tyler Hoffman leading the way over Billy Griffin and Chris Coffey. We've seen the battle of XGT, we're watching it right now. Danny Lowry leading it ahead of Nathan Bird in the 911. Tommy Dreese has dropped down to eighth after his drive through. Lee Saunders still leading in SGT, the Florida in the Dodge Viper, ninth overall but leading. Go back on board with Tommy Treacy. He's back out on track after that drive through. And the reason for that drive through, if you missed it, he, he just got too good a start. He went to the outside at the restart, and uh, obviously Hoots and his team looked at it and said, no, a little too quick off the draw there, Tommy. Yep, so the rule is in Trans Am, on the initial start, as well as the restarts, you cannot pop out or pass before the start finish line. Okay. And that is what Dreesy did. He, I mean, and, and you know what? Credit to his guys calling it green because maybe they were on it a little bit better than the cars in front. And he tried to take advantage of it. But too much of a good thing is ultimately bad. And uh, he had to serve a drive through penalty as a but result. But not with ice cream, right? Not with ice cream okay, or any type of sugary sweet. Uh, uh, Just check it. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. You want to hit it on the mark. It's like it's like anything. It's like you know hitting the gun on 100 meters. You just want to hit it as it goes to green. And sometimes you can misjudge it, but if you get it right on the number, uh, you can you can really make up a lot of difference. And he did do just that. Yep. But he got penalized, so that's the way it goes. You can see the, the, the language of Dreesy's car as he goes through the minimum speed part of the turn. The front of the car is washing side to side a little bit, and. Um, you know, he's losing grip. He's getting everything he can and more out of the tire, and the car starts to slide around as a result as he, as he slams the brakes into 17 and just absolutely hauls it over these big bumps. Look at that fireball. Now, here's a, we just heard that Justin Marks lost voltage alarm on his power system. Does that mean anything to you? I, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, so, you know, just like your traditional road car, these cars have alternators, usually driven oh, okay. by a dra so drive shaft okay. or, or potentially by the engine. And if you get any dirt or debris or enough of that or a cooling duct problem, it'll overheat, it'll stop producing the necessary voltage to run the car. And then you're sitting there, and that may be what happened to the 99. You see, they used sophisticated lingo on me. If you'd have said the alternator went, well, I got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so this battle between Dolan Back and Ken Waits. Ken will be enjoying this. This is one of the greats of Trans Am that Ken is trying to hold off right here. And I think uh, Wally's enjoying it too. Absolutely. They're fighting for a top five. These are critical points. So... Uh, Ken's going to do everything he can to keep him behind, but as you can see, he's just not sticking to that apex curbing as you would like. The tires are probably, you know, uh, nearly at the end of their life, the brakes, etc. And, and let's not forget how torturous it can be on the driver themselves to wheel these things for 100 miles. Yeah, no kidding. Ultimate Headers are the sponsors of Wally's car, and they put in a good performance this weekend. Ken doing everything in his power to hold him off comes through that section where he's made a few mistakes today. Oh, no problems Ken. this time. Yep, again, no, not no, getting to the he. inside. He's, he's not getting to the inside there like he needs to. So he's definitely got his hands full with this car and all of his borrow. But he's doing a great job keeping a real vet behind him. Yeah, let's see how close Wally gets to him this time. As they dive towards the last corner, Sunset Bend. 
We can see his hands inside on the lower left there as he pushes that car through and all those bumps on his body, his helmet shaking side to side as he works his way back to the throttle pedal all the way to the wall. Doing well, he actually, everything he can, yeah. He's actually done a good job because Wally was closer, and so in a straight line, there's no question that the power of Ken's car, the uh, Camaro, the Franklin Road Apparel Camaro. Of course, that's his company in Nashville, Tennessee. And now the Showtime Franklin and Road Apparel car team uh, growing exponentially, certainly in TA2. And Ken making this his last TA year, and I think he'll go back to... Uh, managing what is a very vast team now in TA2. 24 of the 27 gone, all sorts of battles throughout. Here comes your SGT leader. That's uh, Lee Saunders, great character, loves the Viper, has been with it forever in those colors and that number uh, since I started doing Trans Am, and he's always great to talk to. Tends not to go to the West Coast, stays on the uh, East Side, but uh, You'll see Lee Saunders in action as the season goes on, and he's ninth overall as well. That's a good uh, result for him, too, as we take a look at the Griffin, uh, former GT champion in the Griffin Auto Care Sheehan Racing car. A bit of a spread between P1 and 2 there with Scott Griffin in that Ford Mustang chasing down the Audi R8. Yeah, there he is. Griffin also basing himself here in Florida. So there's some five Florida-based drivers involved in this race this weekend, so good to see. And a lot of them in action, actually, including David Pintarek over the winter and the SEC uh, runoffs and uh, getting prizes and uh, points in other championships, just keeping themselves honed in for the season ahead. Of course, Connor Zillage winning in the Miatas. And no change at the front. Brabham Andretti still going at it. But Brabham's got a healthy lead now over Andretti. Keith Grant holding on to third place. And Ken Twaits still fourth. As we look at the number 40 coming through our shot. Absolutely, uh, you know, flying out of turn one. The number 40. And that is another Showtime car. Keith Grant, of course, looking for a good result here. Yeah, I forgot, of course, Showtime. Keith Grant in that stable and just really making his way in TA. He's been doing a lot of sports car racing. The Grants uh, have a heavy presence here, but uh, first time we've really seen Keith uh, at the sharp end. We saw him briefly last year and now he's very confident indeed here in Trans Am and looking for this podium here. Currently in third position, 25 of the 27 to go. Joe Stevens and Johnny Green bringing you the action from TA here in the sunshine of Sebring. Don't forget all the highlights of both TA2 and TA will be on MAV TV if you want to catch it again and tell your friends about the fastest growing motorsport and the best growing motorsport in the US at Bay and it's muscle cars. Trans Am, Brabham leading the way. I'm sure Sir Jack would be very proud to see a member of his family running around in America as the Jack did back in the day and of course as Jeff, John and many others have done for the Brabham's, it's great to see. Yep, I'm just getting word from Pit Lane that Matt Brabham just doing his best to maintain the gap. The Jim Weed car is absolutely flying and it seems to be doing everything that the driver asks. So right now, it's just making sure we maintain this gap. Don't over or underdo it. We are nearing the checkered flag here. Yep, and there's the old ground number 21 of Adam Andretti. And this would be a 1-2 for Chris Dyson. And uh, that's more important, perhaps, for Chris. If he can't finish the race to get his other two steers in a 1-2 situation, is the perfect start. And in fact, it was Dyson's birthday on Friday. I had a brief chat with him, and he said, you know what? I said, yeah, you brought in some British, you brought in Brabham, you brought in Andretti. And he said, you know what, I just want to get off to a good start to the season. And it hasn't gone well for him, but that's why you do that. That's why you bring in other drivers and why it's worth the expense of doing so. Uh, Dyson, not, not afraid to spend the money if it's money well spent. Yep, absolutely. And let's not forget, Tommy Dreesey, following that drive-through, has worked his way up to sixth, and he's going almost four seconds faster per lap than the car in front, which is the number four of Wally Dollenbach. All right, we're going to try and see if we can find the number eight out on track. He's six, as you say, behind Wally Dollenbach. Uh, we're watching second place Adam Andretti as he weaves his way through the track, just trying to maintain everything. This will be an important one for Adam. He was up here in the commentary booth. It's an important season for Adam Andretti. 
He's been around Trans Am a long time. He's a great driver. He's capable of either TA or TA2 or anything else you want to throw him in. But uh, he really wants to turn around what was a tough season for the three-dimensional services team last year. Didn't have many highs, quite a few lows. A lot not his fault at all. Uh, and Matos thinking he'd won the championship as teammate. And, uh, but uh, in the end, it went for a count back. And sadly, they lost out to, of course, Thomas Merrill, who was absolutely delighted with his first Trans Am victory. Yeah, what a crazy end of the TA2 season last year and an incredible start to it this year. So here comes Matt Brabham out of the heat haze in the pink and white. Jim Weed, number 20. Yep, just getting around Chris Coffey in that amazing Maserati. The Auto Italia yeah, Maserati, nice. a gorgeous car out there. And he's still hanging in third, Chris Coffey. So here we see the leader coming out of turn 17, and the white flag flies. One more lap to go. One more lap to go for Matthew Brabham of Australia. And I would say America too, because he's been here ever since, pretty much. Grew up racing here. And obviously following in the footsteps of David and Jeff and the Brabhams that have come before. An absolute legacy in Australian racing, just as the Andretti's are here, and so many other families that have raced here in different iterations. Great to see them all racing together here in Trans Am. We had Parnelli Jones represented, we had Richard Petty represented by himself, of course. Oh man, this car is still flying as it comes into turn seven. And it looks like, oh, a slight off track from the 14 there as he exits seven as Matt Brabham moves towards the checkered flag. Yeah, Billy Griffin taking avoiding action. I don't know what he did there. Maybe, maybe he was un unsighted there a little bit. Didn't expect the leaders to be coming through, but he went off onto the grass for a second. But yeah, absolutely on rails at the moment, Adam. And Matt Brabham in both of them Ford Mustangs. Yep. Hats off to the Dyson crew. Unfortunately, a vibration ended Chris Dyson's race. But we've got two of the Chris Dyson cars up front, and they've done a wonderful job here this race. Well, they used to call it the Pony Wars as the Mustangs took on all comers. And this war has definitely been a war of attrition, and it's been won by the ponies of Ford Mustang as Brabham and Andretti march on to what will be a famous victory for the Dyson Racing Team. And it has been an immaculate performance by both drivers. Sadly, Chris Dyson uh, coming to a stop. Not quite sure why, but either way, he does not get to finish the race. Coming across the line in third will be Keith Grant if he holds it all together. But here comes your leader and winner, Matthew Brabham, into the Sunset Bend for the last time. And it was an accomplished, accomplished performance by Matthew Brabham, who wins here at Sebring. Awesome job. Just an incredible drive from Matt for this race. And Adam Andretti right there. P1 and 2 come across the line. Awesome. Keith Grant, let's not forget. Excellent. P3, last step on the podium. And not far behind him, Ken Thwaites, who had an amazing hard charge from 11th to 4th. To, to, just an incredible drive. That is, in terms of points, Ken Thwaites could be well happy with his day at the office. He made a few mistakes. He's obviously not 100% happy with the car itself. But to come back the way he has is absolutely incredible. Wally Dollenbach takes 5th. Tommy Dreesey, likewise, similar story to finish six after all the trials and tribulations of a drive-through and the problems he had to do of starting at the back. Uh, great result. Danny Lowry wins in XGT ahead of Nathan Bird. Lee Saunders wins in SGT. Tyler Hoffman in GT. He wins and takes 10th overall. And awesome. And then there we get to see the side of that Bennett Racing uh, Mercedes GT3 car going into 17 one last time. Well done, Danny Lowry as he comes to the checkered flag and wins in XGT. The lights blazing on what has been an immaculate performance. Following him home, Nathan Bird in the Porsche. But boy, Joe Stevens just reflect a second. That had everything, didn't it? Wow, that was <laughs> insane. I mean, really, the race early on was Dyson and Justin Marks, and that's what I predicted. Uh, unfortunately, both of those cars having mechanical issues, which stopped them to getting the checkered flag, but the intensity didn't slow. Adam just carving his way through that, you know, through that pack to finish right behind uh, Chris Dyson's teammate, Matt Brown. What an awesome race. 100 miles here at Sebring International Raceway. It was a thrill.
Yeah, it wasn't the uh, defense of his title that Chris Dyson was expecting, but he'd already made plans just in case, and they worked out just fine. One, two for his team. And, well, it certainly wasn't the race that Tommy Dreese wanted. He missed the uh, driver's briefing. He won't do that again. And uh, yeah. <laughs> he also uh, had a drive-through penalty for the restart. And uh, I wouldn't say he won't do that again, but uh, he, <laughs> might, he, he might try to be a little bit more cautious next time out. I love Tommy. Yeah, Tommy keeps it interesting, that's for sure. And an incredible drive, starting from the back, having a drive-through, finishing just outside the top five. That's a home run. Say again. Ken Dwight's then on board with him as he slows down. And in a moment, Ben Sisson will be down in pit lane to talk to the top three. And Joe, while we've got a moment, your year ahead. TA2, how's it looking? Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a challenge as always, but we are absolutely up for it. We are representing Cube 3. Berryman products and Liquid Molly as we have. Now Berryman's um, been with you, what, six years? Yes, it? so, so has Liquid Molly. And now we've got two amazing drivers. Check one, two, one, Nathan two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And check, we've check, got, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, um, as well as we have Josh Sarchet, who's an LMP3 champion. Check, so check, a great one, two, lineup. One, two. Uh, of, uh, fewer cars than we typically run. You know, four or five is our usual number. We're going to slow things down a little bit on the car count so we can focus on the performance of our cars. Great to have you in the booth, Joe Stevens. We'll be watching out for Stevens Miller Racing as the season unfolds. Josh Sarjay and Nathan Hearn, the Australian champion. Talking of Australian champions, there he is, Woo. Matthew Brabham. The Jim Weed man does it in the number 20. And the love, he is, he's like Clint Eastwood. He's like the ultimate ringer. You bring him into town when there's trouble, and he just delivers six shooting all the way to the checkered flag. And look who's the first to greet him, the yeah. boss. Let's yeah. head down to Ben Sissel, who I'm sure will have some fun with these two. Well, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Chris Dyson here with Matt. And while Matt is getting out of his helmet, Chris, what happened to you out there? Yeah, you know, it was uh, a real shame. We were running 2-3 uh, there, just biding our time, just trying to make our move on Justin. It was a hell of a race up to that point, and uh, we just lost uh, we lost power in the 16 car. And I tried to get it around, but it, the temperature started to go off the clock, so I had to pull off in 17, unfortunately. Brilliant job for Matt, though. Great job for Adam picking up the pieces here, and 1-2 uh, for the team. Nice. I love it. Matt Brabham, here's a little towel for you if you need it. How does it feel to win here at Sebring? And what is your TA record now? It's pretty good, but it, you know it's all thanks to Chris and the team and and the sponsors and and Jim Weed and everyone that puts this car together because uh, it's uh, it was a race of attrition out there today, bumpy track like Sebring. Uh, it can be hot on these cars, and uh, yeah, I mean I just I was just lucky to finish. Obviously, pick up the pieces. Uh, Chris was fast there. Obviously, had some issues, and it was fun racing with Justin Marks too. Is it, uh, it was a good race until it uh, until it ended for him. So uh, super happy. I mean, it's so great to be a part of the series, and it's so much fun. How do these TA cars handle Sebring in what I would call pretty hot conditions? Yeah, I mean, they jump around a lot. I mean, I feel like sometimes you hit a bump and you're going to take off like the airplanes over the back there. But, uh, no, they're so much fun. I mean, we're doing sub two-minute lap times, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's getting around here. So, I mean, they're, they're just so much fun to drive. I mean, they're just absolute beasts. And uh, when you get a, a car like this and you're racing side by side, leaning on each other, it, it's nothing better. I love it. Matt Brabham, congratulations. Let's come over and talk to find Adam Andretti because Adam Andretti didn't even know he was coming here to do this and then to finish second unbelievable yeah I mean I I can't thank these guys enough at CD racing and like I said in the pre-race I didn't let Chris get the sentence out of his mouth before I jumped on this opportunity and uh, awesome job by Matthew Brabham I mean what kind of winning percentage do you have to have in any certain series before uh, you're looked at and and I, I just love the fact that he's here with us in Trans Am that's one of the most talented people you ever care to be around uh, you know so to Chris Dyson and and the opportunity here all Graham uh, get well who may we'll see you again soon I'm sure of it but uh, hopefully we gave your hot rod a good ride today and I feel very very fortunate and blessed to be here and, and to be a part of this whole group and uh, I just I'm, I'm over the moon you know I, it's been it's been rough and uh, I mean on top of it 
point, like, who who gets to say that they raced fiercely with two Boris Eds that are two different people in two different days and two different classes? And I got that opportunity, and uh, I'm just very grateful and blessed. Thank you, Ben. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Adam Andretti second, but really one of the stories here that's just crazy, Keith. Grant coming out here in what I would call the most stacked field in TA, limited experience in TA, third place. That's got to feel really good. Uh, it does. It feels really good. I had a great weekend. Showtime gave me a great car from the beginning, and uh, I just uh, wish I could have could have gotten a little better start and been able to uh, to run with these guys, but I don't think there was any chance of running with, uh, with Brabham today. He had a really good car and uh, did a really good job. Nice. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, our podium and TA. We're about to do the podium celebrations as, as team owner Ken Twaits comes in. But, Jonathan and Joe, back to you. Great stuff. Thanks, Ben. And, yeah, nice to hear from our top three. No surprises. Great to see Keith uh, Grant there helping his team boss, who's also putting in a good result uh, in that race. Let's take a look at the results then. Uh, confirmation of the provisional results. Matt Brabham, superb. What a history he's creating now in Trans Am. Adam Andretti, once again, a brilliant come from nowhere second place. And I say nowhere because he was filling in for Massoud uh, in second place. Keith Grant gets on the podium in the first race of the year. Ken Twaits, his team boss, is behind him in fourth. And Dollenbach in fifth place. Welcome back, Wally. Tommy Dreesey, great race, up to sixth place from the back. Danny Lowry, seventh and leading in XGT, winning in XGT. Obviously, Dollenbach willing in historic Trans Am as the only competitor in that one. Lee Saunders wins in SGT in ninth place overall. Nathan Bird just ahead is second in XGT and GT is won by Chris Coffey. Um, and Randy Hale just behind him in XGT. Billy Gra uh, Griffin in 13th position. Matthew Bootson in 14. Boris said Justin Mark sadly. Obviously, all of the next ones uh, not finishing uh, with Marks going out with an electrical alternator problem. Menard likewise having gear shift problems. Dyson just explain what went wrong with him. No finish for him. Likewise, Pintaric and Grant. Yeah, what a wild race. Hats off to the Jim Weed for Mustangs. Just an incredible drive from Matt uh, Brabham. Jim Weed is actually a Greg Pickett company, and, uh, you know, obviously that partnership seems to be working really well. So then. That's the result of what has been a great weekend of racing. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, starting with TA, and it had everything. I mean, really, we didn't know which way to look at some point. But anyway, it started off nice and clean. Right from the get-go, Marks on the right-hand side gets up the inside. On the outside, Bernard got a flyer. Dreesy also going very strong early on and moving up the field, having started at the back, and he was making overtakes like it was no tomorrow, going past Ken Twaits at turn one here. And obviously in the thick of it, Boris said, likewise Andretti, Bernard dropped back a bit. Then Dyson would go out while challenging for the lead with Rabham, and that changed the complexion of the race because the safety car came out. Uh, Boris said was going strong at that time. Billy Griffin was good, but there was no stopping. This man, Matthew Brabham, who takes victory at Sebring. We'll take a short break here from Sebring. We'll be right back with more to wrap it all up after this. A force of nature? Man, that's good water. I feel like Chuck Norris. Sea Force water is a force of nature. What can it do for you? Sebring International Raceway. Let's make some noise for the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. 
Come on, people. Come on into the bullpen. If you're out there, come on in. We are all inclusive here at the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. Come into these fences. We've got some giveaways to throw out to everybody. Let's celebrate. I need everybody to be super loud and proud and show everybody why Sebring is one of the most fantastic race venues in the world. Do you guys believe that about Sebring? There we go. I like this place. All right, we are going to start out in the national championship. GT, new to the series, came to us for the first time at Circuit of the Americas, had a great showing there. He's been in the paddock for a long time, but let's hear it. Third place in that Maserati, Chris Coffey. Where is he? Here he comes right from the back. From the crowd, Chris Coffey, Norwood Auto Italia. He's got a lot to explain about that car. Unbelievable. Last year's GT overall winner and champion. Let's hear it in second place, Billy Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I think so too. And in first place in GT in that Audi R8. Number 91, let's hear it, Tyler Hoffman! Do you want me to talk to all You think he's in second? Uh oh. Did you guys hear that honesty? <laughs> Billy Griffin, you're going to have to explain that. Hold on. Nice trophy anyway, so I figured I'd get one. So Billy Griffin is saying that uh, I broke in turn seven. And I broke an axle in turn seven in a white flag lap, and he passed me. So I'm pretty sure he won. <laughs> well, this has never happened. I don't know what to do here, ladies and gentlemen. The own driver is saying he should change steps, but I'm going to have to go with what do we go with here, John? Timing and scoring. We're going to have to hold on. A little commercial, Brad. Well, Billy. That's unbelievable. I've, I've just never had that happen. Usually it's the other way around, and, you know, people are like, that's my spot. And, but he's like, I'll give the it's spot. Against my personality, if you really want it is, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not used no, to that. Really. Oh. All right, let's give it up for Billy Griffin, and you guys switch. Oh, my goodness. How about that for sportsmanship? Oh, my. Well, Billy, you know I love you, and now that love has just increased. Unbelievable. So tell us about your race out there. Um, the car has been giving us trouble all weekend long. It wouldn't shift. Qualified and stayed in first gear. It wouldn't come out of third gear. It was a nightmare. Uh, the race started. It did it again. So I first four laps or whatever was doing it. It's got some kind of emergency override stupid button I was trying to hit and beat up and punch and kick. So it finally started working. I started catching up. I finally got a caution. Thank you. Whoever did that. Uh, I got my lap back. This young man made a mistake, a little bit, little greasy tires. I capitalized on it. It was awesome. I had a lot of fun doing that. I was, I was glad that he didn't uh, do anything crazy. Um, he was very gracious when I went around. And then uh, the car started rattling like, uh, like you wouldn't believe. And I said, oh, the axle's going to go. So this place, if you want to learn what your car can do, this is the place to do it. That's for sure. Nice. I love it. Billy Griffin. And Billy, keep this up. I love this version of Billy Griffin. So much fun. And then it seems like that's the theme. I know you've been chasing gremlins all weekend, rewiring, changing computer systems, but you finished the race, Coffee. Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy to finish the race. I feel uh, Billy's problems here because I've gone through two axles, a wheel bearing, uh, no shifting, all kinds of problems, down on power. Basically showed up and was just drinking through a fire hose. So... Uh, he definitely managed his tires a lot better. Um, after that last restart, I was just on marbles, basically. So uh, congrats to him. Uh, it sucks that uh, he broke an axle. Um, he really earned the second place, but I'll take it. So nice. I love it. Yeah, you got to finish, right? And that's the crazy thing about the Trans Am Series. The series started here at Sebring. Sebring is a rough track to start at. It really makes you prove your car and what you can do in the offseason. And Tyler Hoffman, i got to give it up to you, man. Nice job. Oh, thank you Mary, very much. It was a blast out there. Um, thank you to Mike Attaway for the privilege to drive his car. Unfortunately, he got sick and um, asked me to fill in for him. So it's a privilege and an honor to be up here racing with these guys. Thank you. Nice. Well, check that out. Let's hear it. GT. I've never seen that before in motorsports, to, to give away a place like that. Billy Griffin, Chris Coffey, Tyler Hoffman, Ford Mustang, Maserati, Audi R8. Throw those out to the fans. All right, Billy, here's your time for redemption. What kind of arm? Oh, look at that. That's the best arm yet. 
Billy Griffin, the adrenaline still going. Chris Coffey, the nice leisurely throw out there. Chris, nice job, man. One more photo Proud of you guys. Billy Griffin, that's one of the coolest things I've seen in motorsports. That's awesome, dude. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Griffin, Chris Kaufman, Chris Coffey, Tyler Hoffman, Ford, Maserati, Audi. It's fun to see these GT classes growing like this, too. Oh, we're doing this, he says. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, yeah. Hey, Chris Coffey, how about a little Ric Flair? Woo! Yes, nice, I love it. One more time, Billy Griffin, Chris Coffey, Tyler Hoffman. Tyler, welcome. That was quite a showing. Super GT. Oh, don't forget your $50 at Summit Motorsports either. After that, after that race, you guys need that $50. Seems like all your cars are breaking. First in Super GT, that beautiful Dodge Viper in his home state. So if you're from Florida, you better get loud for Lee Saunders. Jump on up. Yeah. Okay. So second, look, John is uh, uh, telling me what happened. Second and third did not complete enough laps to deserve a step up here. So you're up here all by your lonesome, Lee. How's it feel? Uh, really good. Uh, it was uh, obviously really hot out there today. Uh, cool shirt, shirt quit before we pulled out. So uh, I was uh, ready to see this one done. Uh, unfortunately, Larry and Kaylee couldn't finish. Uh, they were really doing well. Uh, hate that for them. Wanted to see them uh, out there, obviously. So, but uh, really thank you to my team. Uh, you know, Kevin Smith, everybody. Uh, um, Dylan and uh, Eddie, thanks for their help this weekend, and uh, thanks for Trans Am for putting on a fantastic race. Nice. I love it. Let's hear it. Lee Saunders and that beautiful SGT Dodge Viper, used to being on the top step here at Sebring International Raceway. And how about a hand for Sebring International Raceway, all their enhancements. I love coming here year after year. Seems like they make a ton of enhancements for you, the spectators. I love that. Lee Saunders taking a little victory drink there, spinning it out, spinning out one for the homies, or maybe it was too hot. Hold that up. Let's hear it. Lee Saunders, ladies and gentlemen. Lee, nice job. You, you scared your competition away. XGT. So excited for this to see a big field of XGT. In third place, Extreme GT in that number 31. Let's hear it. Randy Hale. Where is Randy? There he is. Here he comes. Randy joined us on the podium here last year. So you get right up on there, Randy. In second place, first time in Trans Am. This dude has raced with us the last couple years and just about everything. Racing with TLM this year, number 88, Nathan Bird, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. He's been in SVRA races this weekend in uh, a Porsche and in an open wheel car. He's been in International GT and now in Trans Am. So cool to see. And then one of my favorite drivers was with us in just about everything last year in the number 42 bridge hole machine. Let's hear it. Danny Lowry. <laughs> Danny, you raced so many cars with us. I had to peek back there to make sure I had the right car. Randy Hale, welcome back. You did uh, Sebring with us last year, Road Atlanta. Road Atlanta. Road Atlanta you started. All right, tell us about your race out there. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, put a lot of, I guess we entertained everybody, but we tried to just finish the race. So, Anybody you want to thank? Uh, thank Diane, who supports me over here and my kids at home. So, Ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for the honesty of these drivers? Don't you like that? Isn't that a little bit refreshing? I like that. All right, Nathan Bird. Dude, welcome to Trans Am. So cool to see you in every single in every single series here. And it seems like last year you tried to race every weekend. So is it fun to be in the Trans Am series? 
Oh yeah, it's really, really fun to be in a Trans Am series, and I can't wait to race all the rest of the weekends I'm going to be doing with uh, SVRA and Trans Am, uh, jumping between three classes and two different cars, sometimes three different cars, and it's going to be a lot of fun going throughout the year and uh, battling with these guys in XGT with the, with the Porsche. It's really, really fun, and it's really challenging. I really like to thank uh, TLM for just all the hard work and prepping the car, three different classes, back and forth, different race fuels, tire changes, managing things, and it's uh, it's really a, a a a blast working with those guys, and I can't wait to go forward and with the continuing weekends. Nice, I love it. Yeah, where'd that come from? Oh, right there, David Tuati. Nice. All right, Danny Lowry. This weekend in the Mercedes, right? How was your race out there? Ooh, it was warm. Uh, but I had a great race. I had a great car. I uh, had a lot of fun competing with these guys today. Uh, young Nathan right here, he was uh, eating my bumper up most of the time, and uh, I think his tires went before mine did. He's one hell of a race car driver, I can tell you that, and I'm hoping we see him out here all year long. Uh, had a great time out there. Uh, I'd like to thank my, my wife, Paige, is here with us today, and my uh, daughter, Hannah Lee, son-in-law, uh, Cole, and my uh, Bennett family of companies, and Bridge Hall, and Ricky Sanders Racing. Nice. I love it. And i got to give it up, Danny Lowry. We had Richard Petty here, and Danny Lowry bought Richard Petty's hat for charity to give to uh, Richard Petty's Camp for Kids, so Victory Junction. So let's hear it. Danny Lowry in first, Nathan Burns second, Randy Hale third. Hold those trophies up, guys. If you've got the strength left, there we go. Then we're going to come up here for the hat dance. Eric Whitnable. Well, Nathan Bird, it's awesome to see you up here, man. And now you're just going to be super busy, right, Tawadi? Randy Hale, I made a comment about those shoes in Atlanta. It looks like you haven't put a mark on them. They look good. Very nice. All right, let's get loud, Sebring. One more time. Randy Hale, Nathan Bird, Danny Lowry, Extreme GT. I love that this class is growing. I think Nathan's got, you got to go to an enduro. Yeah, he's got to race an enduro, so he can't smell of alcohol. But you got, well, he's got to go, you can't smell of alcohol in a race car. Oh, and then, well, pour one out for the homies or something. Here we go. Let's hear it. Danny Lowry, he'll celebrate, maybe. Oh, maybe not. All right, there we go. You got to work on that, Danny Lowry. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, T.A. Hard-fought battle out there. Unbelievable battle. In T.A. Masters, Franklin Road Apparel, Showtime Motorsports. Where is Ken Twaits, T.A. Masters? Let's hear it. Bringing out three cars to this battle, and I think four T.A. Two cars, is that right? Let's get up on the top yeah. step, Ken. Yeah. Yeah, I told Ken today, I said, Ken, you might have a problem. We might need to have an intervention because this addiction has gone a little bit deep. But, man, T.A. Masters fighting to try to make it to the podium it's right behind in fourth place, but then having Wally and Tommy Dreesy coming up behind you, great race. Yeah, it was awesome. I tried to finish 10th all day long, but, you know, we ended up fourth, so it was awesome. You know, Wally and I always have good races. We're good friends from a long time ago. He's beat me the last two times. He was not going to beat me today, man. It was fun. I love it. Let's hear it for Ken Twaits. Ken, do you want to thank your team owner? Hey, I, I don't want to do that, but I want to thank Keith. Keith did a great job. Keith Grant for Showtime. Adam Andretti, way to go, man. He's a buddy of mine. He kicked butt today. And Matthew Brabham, way to go, guys. Nice. All right, well, hold on, Ken. You got to hold that thing up, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, hold on. Hold that up. Let's hear it. Ken Twaits, Masters, TA. And then you got to change hats. Hold on, Ken. And if you're wondering, this great shirt that I'm wearing is from Franklin Road Apparel. And you can order the shirt at franklinroad.com. What is it? Franklinroad.com. And, hey, that's slimming, man. It is. It is. I'm a lot fatter than this, if you can imagine that. One more time. Ken Twaits, Masters, TA. Look at that. Who's got it? Oh, man, he didn't want to grab it. I think he's afraid of your cooties. Hey, Ken, congratulations. Good start. Good start. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in my probably 10 years with Trans Am, I've never seen the TA class thicker than this with talent. So excited for this year, and we're about to bring them up. I need everybody to get super loud here at Sebring. In third place in this beautiful Franklin Road apparel, Showtime Motorsports car from Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. Let's hear it, Keith Grant. Kind of new in the series. Here, Keith, if I'll get you up there. He's been helping me out commentating in the booth this weekend. He raced in TA2, but he's always around to drive, and he's always down to drive anything. He even mentioned today he'd like to drive a vintage 2002. We have an Andretti in the series, in both series. Let's hear it. Adam Andretti, second place with that beautiful all Graham Ford Mustang. We got a Ford racing fan out there. Unbelievable. Oh, here we go. Andretti. Got some Jim Weed energy going to you. All right. Our queen of PR, she was telling me this. Matthew Brabham has raced in six Trans Am races. He has gotten first four times, and he's gotten second two times. That's got to be one of the best records ever in professional racing. In this beautiful pink car, let's hear it. Matthew Brabham. Sporting that new Jim Weed suit. Awesome job. And we were talking about this. The Brabham family has so much history here at Sebring. So cool to have them here. So, Keith, you've been watching your dad in the TA series for years. He finally started joining us. And look, here you are on the podium. Yeah, it's pretty surprising. I'm uh, glad to be here and uh, really had a great weekend and uh, glad I could compete like we did. Showtime gave me a great car. I've uh, been able to run up near the front all weekend and uh, just glad I could finish uh, right up near the, the front. I want to thank Showtime, my wife Kim, for her support this weekend and my family. And now I'm looking at your car looking for some sponsors to read off. It looks like you've got some real estate possibly for sale. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you're welcome to put your name on the side, but it's going to cost you. <laughs> I love it. You can put your name on that car, but it's going to cost you, he says. Adam Andretti, buddy. High five, man. Yeah, nice buddy. job. Yeah, That's got to be so much fun. Oh, it's, it's beyond fun. I, and I can't thank CD Racing enough, Chris Dyson, the Dyson family, uh, all Graham, uh, who made, this is who made's car, and uh, to have the privilege to drive it, you know. And I know Matt knows that privilege as well, as he stepped in that seat many a times, and uh it's a, it's, it's a perennial podium finisher, and um, I was so fortunate to get the show that I had of, of Matty racing Justin there. It was a great battle between him and the 99, and uh, just uh, really fortunate to be here. Really grateful and blessed, and uh, thank you to all you fans that showed up and are here fighting through this Florida heat and, and cheering us on. We know you're out there. We see you, and uh, we can't thank you all enough. But uh, all Graham and Jim Weed, and come get your Jim Weed if you haven't tried it out. But uh, it's been an awesome, awesome weekend, and I thank you to Trans Am and Perella Motorsports Holdings and, and everyone involved. It's, it's uh, Greenlight TV. You all just rock and make our lives just so much fun. Nice. I love it. Adam Andretti, ladies and gentlemen. And I have this song in my head. You know that song, uh, all I do is win, win, win. I feel like that's your song, Matt Brabham. How does it feel to be on the top step again with us in TA? If you if you ask the karaoke experts down there, that's not the that's not the song. That's not my go-to song in the bar. So, um, but I wouldn't sing that today. So no, it, it was uh, it was unbelievable weekend. Um, obviously, Chris was uh, was really fast in the race, and Justin was too. But uh, they had issues, and this track is just is just really hard on the cars. So. Uh, I was just fortunate, Adam was fortunate, and uh, to share the podium with these guys is, is so cool, especially having Adam here. The, the name Brabham Andretti at a track like this with so much history is just, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and the series was so much history too. Trans Am is just unbelievable, so much fun. And obviously, thank you to Chris, the team. They deserve the one too, so it's, I'm so happy to get it for those guys. And uh, we, we had a good birthday weekend celebration with everyone, and, uh, and Jim Weed and Allgram and all the sponsors that that prepped these cars. I mean, we, we made it to the end and got the one, two, and, uh, and we survived, so it was great. Nice. I love it. How cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? All right, hold those trophies up. Look at Chris there in the, for the photos and the gym weed. Look at that. All right, and then if you'll put down the trophies, we're going to check out your arms here. We're going to see who's got the best arm. A little jug. We got some people wanting it back there. We got some people back here that want it. You gotta get a loud crowd to get a hat. You gotta work for these hats. There we go. Ooh, a little, a little 
Boom. Come on, Andretti. Let's see what you got. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, oh, there we go. Jumps up for it. Nice grab. Then we're going to switch the hats. Thank you to Pirelli and our marketing partners and these beautiful new trophies from Jostens. I'm really digging these new trophies. Jostens, thank you for coming on board for 2023. All right, lift up those beautiful Jostens trophies. Let's hear it. Come on, Sebring, get it out one more time. Keith Grant, there's Chris Coffey, Adam Andretti, Matt Brabham up here. Sebring International Raceway for the Sebring Speed Tour. Some wine coming up. Champagne, I'm sorry. Champagne. What are you guys doing? You drinking it? You spraying it? Oh, oh. I see how it is. Great. I'm going to get pulled over tonight, and the cop's going to be like, you smell like alcohol, son. All right, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Keith Grant, Adam Andretti, Matthew Brabham. Actually, that felt pretty good. Thank you for that. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want some gym weed, come over here, step up here. This dude's got some gym weed for you. All right, so Matt Brabham, I need you to stay up here. And uh, hold on, hold on. We'll do family photos here in a second. And Keith, stand by, okay? But Matt Brabham, if you'll get up on the top step, if you don't mind. Adam Andretti, I'm playing you off, buddy. <laughs> That's a wrap on Andretti. All right, Emco Gears. The Emco Top Gear Award is going to be presented by Tom Glad of Emco Gears. And this is a rough track on the gearboxes. So, Tom Glad, if you'll stand up there, hold up that check, gentlemen. Yeah, Ashley says you're missing a few zeros there. $500 goes to Matthew Brabham there. Ladies and gentlemen, Emco Top Gear Award. Let's hear it. It's, it's little things like this from our sponsors and marketing partners that keep our drivers going, and this track is definitely rough on the gearboxes, so thank you so much for that. And then another one of our great marketing partners. Let's bring up Matt Googe from Cool Shirt, and definitely everybody needed a Cool Shirt system in their car today. Mac and Keith, if you guys will stand right here. Right here, is that okay, Chris? Okay. Hold that up, Mac, and I got to brag on Mac a little bit. Because he is up the ante, $500 of product goes to the winner of the Cool Shirt Move of the race, which goes to Keith Grant. for Keith Grant, new to the series, just is coming up and making your way to the podium. Congratulations. And Mac, thank you, and Cool Shirt for all your help. Thank you guys so much. That does it for the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. But we will be back here next year, right? I love starting the season here. The Sebring Speed Tour back here next year. There's more racing still to come with SVRA. And then we've got a Dyson family photo up here. So, Dyson, bring them all up, buddy. Thank you guys so much for coming out. So that concludes the podium celebrations. And as you saw in the midst of all that, the cool shirt, 500 bucks. And I tell you what, there's no question about it. It's been a long time sponsor, the cool shirt. And obviously that's what they do to keep them cool during the race. So let's take a look at what gave the Cool Shirt Systems move of the race, and it was, of course, Keith Grant. You just saw him getting awarded with the 500 bucks, but it was basically his inexperience that led him to get the Cool Shirt move because third place in his first race of the year, having done a couple last year, but this was an immaculate performance by Keith Grant. We've heard of all Richard and the other Grant's exploits in Trans Am, but Keith has just joined the fold. And he, without doubt, does our cool shirt systems move of the race. Now, of course, we saw highlights of the TA action. So let's turn our attention now to the other three categories. That, of course, is XGT, SGT and GT and take a look at the highlights. Plenty of action once again in this. And... Once again, Wally Dollenbach leading in the Masters. Randy Hale doing a very good job in the Porsche, having to deal with safety cars. Problems for Pierce in the 26th. He was out of contention. Lee Saunders in SGT was flying. 
And in XGT, it was also a good battle that went all the way to the finish. But no stopping. The Audis out of going good, but it was the Mercedes, the number 42 Bennett. Mercedes of Bridge Hall's Danny Lowry taking victory in XGT. And don't forget, BAF TV, our new TV partner for this year here in the States, is going to be on prime time each and every Thursday of race weekend post. Uh, so Thursday, March 2nd, you'll be able to see at 8 p.m. Eastern all the action from TA2, and that was a cracking race. And what you've just watched and witnessed here, you'll be able to see at 9 p.m. Eastern on the same day. That's March 2nd. Coming up this Thursday night on MAV TV, our new home for Trans Am. Well, it's been a great weekend. It's been perfect weather and a great way to start off 2023. Announcements all around. We've got MAV TV, Greenlight have got another contract to continue to bring you these great pictures throughout the season. We're looking forward to that. My thanks to Joe Stevens, to Adam Andretti, and to all the commentators who came up and helped us out throughout the weekend. We'll be back in just two weeks' time when we head to NOLA, where we also add the other Pirella Holdings uh, piece of property. And, of course, that is F4 and F are looking forward to that. We'll also have SBRA and Trans Am as they head to their second round. It's been a great weekend. Rafa Matos gets his third win in a row in TA2 and Matthew Brabham wins four out of the six races he's ever done in TA. Two great names, two great races. You can see more of it on MAV TV but from me Jonathan Green. Until next time, goodbye for now. Motul has helped engines and drivers go faster, further, and stronger. Tested in the heat of battle, driven with passion, with one aim to give you superior powertrain protection and performance. Motul. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. You've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything.